How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Hope you're all doing well. Today we're here with a Siege Battle Tournament, so it should be quite a bit of fun. New format here on the channel to give a good old try. And we are in the top four of the day. So how it works essentially is the individuals, it's a best of two. So it's basically a race against the clock as a tiebreaker. So if two folks, for example, both win as the attackers and the Siege, uh, whoever did it quicker wins the match overall. Because siege battles do take quite a bit of time. I mean, we do have a 20-minute cap on that, but of course there's the setup period. The armies are quite a bit bigger in terms of the picking and all that, so we do uh, we do our thing. Welcome, welcome, yes. It's going to be good, so let's take a look here at the breakdown, and we will progress from there. So this is the format for the tournament. You can see here we had a, a relatively smaller tournament today, but again, it's a new format. So we do have essentially like what you see in Domination. You have unit caps and then a couple of restrictions on like Gorgers and War Sleds and some of those really, really broken units, right? But looking at the rules here, you can see that if the attacker wins both times, whichever player won in the least amount of time wins the tiebreaker. If the defender won both times, tiebreaker goes to whichever defender won in the least amount of time. If defender won at both times by lasting the full 20 minutes, tiebreak goes to whichever defending player ended with the most total models remaining on the game end screen. So kind of an interesting one for sure. I mean, that that doesn't really happen, the last option there. But yeah, it's been great so far. We've had some really good matches in some of the earlier rounds. In terms of the special deployment rules, uh, basically how it works is the attacker will deploy their entire army and then be like, hey, man, I'm, I'm good to go. So then the defender sets up from there and the attacker cannot move again or change their deployment. So it's very similar to like, you know, what you would see in like a campaign siege battle in that regard. So, so yes, we're in the top four right now. We have Grun facing off against uh, LJ, I believe, in the bottom. Hopefully I don't mangle that name too much. And then Umize is going to be facing off against the winner of FPOD and Trader GG, determining who will be going on to the grand finals. So thank you all for joining. Here are the brackets as of now. And we should be uh, getting started with our first match here in just a second. We'll let a couple more folks gather up and we'll go from there. When is the next Dawn of War 2 stream? Uh, that's going to be probably Wednesday. So I was going to um, I was going to stream Age of Empires on Friday, but my unfortunately my wrist problems were acting up really bad. I uh, I I, paint, I was painting minis and uh, I started getting these like really bad pulsing kind of sharp pains in my right hand. So I had to chill out. I've I've been overdoing it lately. So um, you know I'm not still fully recovered from that. Probably never will be sadly. Uh, but got had to take a couple days to just chill out, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to. But yes, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a medley streams as well, where basically what we do is we have, um, like the first hour and a half is one game, another hour and a half with another game, and then the third hour and a half. So it'd be like basically in total, what, a four and a half hour stream? And you like, it'd be split into thirds covering different subject matter, which would be really fun. All right, so let me see if the players are ready. First match of the day is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, the Ogre Kingdoms facing off against Corn. Now, they keep that pick the entire series. So basically, it's kind of like a faction war in a sense. Not faction war per se, but when you're in a best of three in the Siege tournament or a best of two, you will be playing one faction the entire way through until your next best of three. Uh, then you pick a different faction. So you get to like play that faction as the attacker and as the defender. Hammond, hey thank you. There's rumors about an Age of Mythology remaster. That'd be really cool for sure. I never really played that game, but if they did remaster it, I think I would certainly be interested in perhaps covering that, which would be cool. RTS is my jam. Sid Seals uh, says, Old Man Turn, I feel you. I'm having back issues in my 30s. Yeah, back, back issues are pretty common for sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, hope you're doing better, man. Intenso says, when are you going to check my message on Discord? It sent you a possible fix for uh, sound bugs. Yeah, so I tried a bunch of different fixes and nothing really works, honestly. Yeah. Nothing really worked for me in terms of the Dawn of War sound bug. But, you know, maybe someday. Who knows? Maybe Relic will fix it as a Christmas present. Probably not, but we can dream. First match here is going to be Grun 59 against uh, Helljay. And we are going to be on the Writhing Fortress. So the map is repeated both times to make it fair for both players because certain maps obviously have different challenges. So to make it a little bit more fair in a competitive setting, this is going to be the nature of the beast. Have you looked over Siege maps? So today's tournament overall is being organized and hosted by Umais, uh, the Mountain King. Of course, you guys have seen him as a mighty dwarf lord in Warhammer 2, doing very well in faction wars with dwarves and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, you know, serious tournament player, very, very skilled. And he is running the tournament today. I'm just casting it. So I'm a little bit hands-off in that regard. Darren, glad you liked Dawn of War 2 multiplayer. It's awesome to watch. It's really, really fun to play. And yes, I did see the Horus Heresy trailer, and I'm super soaked on it because I play Black Legion and Tabletop. So for me, it was really cool seeing like Horus and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool, man. I enjoyed it. So it's going to be Corn versus Ogre Kingdoms. Corn is going to be the defender, if I'm not mistaken here. 
we'll have to double check. Okay, it looks like we had the, the dreaded uh, drop bug, the desync. It only happens the first game, and then when we uh, we go from there, yeah. So I got a screenshot of the builds, and we will go from there. So I just got to remake the lobby real quick. It sounds they're both still here. Can I just like ready up again? No. Okay. So one sec, guys. Yeah, there you go. There is the desync. Classic CA. The, gotta love it. So it doesn't happen the second time though. When you get those same people back in the lobby, the desync doesn't happen again. So it, it's a really really strange strange bug. All right, let me get the folks from the tournament. Rejoin, same armies, go have fun. All righty, perfect. So going back to the siege battles, you know, on the upside of things, it gives time for uh, more folks to join so we don't miss out on the battle. So Writhing Fortress is the map. Writhing Fortress of Chaos. We use custom funds for this, so it's going to be 18,000. So the battles are obviously a little bit bigger. The attacker gets 18,000 gold and the defender gets like 12 point, 12 point something, if I'm not mistaken. It's in that ballpark. And uh, then we also need to do large armies and uh, time limit needs to be set to 20 minutes. So we do also run a 20 minute timer as well. Are you hyped for the return of Space Dwarves? Yeah, I couldn't believe that. The squats. Is that, uh, I think they're being renamed to something else. So like Legions of Votan or something. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I don't think I'll play them personally. Um, I don't know. I, I like I like playing underdogs, and I feel like they're just going to get the new Codex treatment where they're just like the Unholy Terminators. And uh, I like more Assault Armies, and it looks like they're going to be more kind of in the ballpark of, um, you know, shooting armies. So, All right, let me get these guys. Make sure they are on their way back. Perfect. All righty. Excellent. So they'll be back in just a minute and then we'll get started. Anyways, yeah, on the discussion of the, uh, the the dreaded space dwarves, I don't know. If there was like a model that really called to me, I would consider it. But um, basically, I have my Black Legion army and my Death Guard army that are my primary projects. Death Guard's fully finished, but the Black Legion still needs a little bit of, uh, a little bit of love. I have like maybe like 15, 20 models that aren't painted yet. Um, on top of that, I'm also having my Warhammer fantasy army, the Empire army, which I rebased Rage of Sigmar. One of my friends is ripping the bases off those bad boys and he's going to strip the paint so I can repaint them in, in a classic Warhammer fantasy paint scheme. So, uh, so that's going to be a big project in the next like eight months is going to be my Warhammer fantasy empire army. And they're going to go back on square bases as well in preparation for the old world. So probably going to do an outdoor paint scheme. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Like uh, red and blue, you know, the classic Carl Franz, even though old world will take place 300 years prior, if I'm not mistaken to the current uh, timetable. We are going to be going with an outdoor paint scheme. And, you know, Carl Franz will be in the army. He'll be chilling. It'll be his grandpa. Potential Men of Iron as well, which is neat. Oh, is that another one of the rumors as well? That they're going to be included? Included? What did my brain? My brain was like thinking of the, the strangest words there. All right, let me see if these guys are having some problems here. All right. Hopefully uh, the patch that's coming out will fix that desync. It's like the most obnoxious shit ever. It's been, uh, you know, right before the game came out, we didn't actually have that problem when we were in the early access. And then there was like a day one patch, like a patch the day before the game launched that just literally added a ton of bugs into the game. Yeah, it's a shame. Have they confirmed the return of score bases? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. On one of the articles they did for the old world, they were talking about square bases, if I'm not mistaken. Legions of Voltron, are they just going to, yeah, create like these huge like 1990s Power Ranger-esque machines? That would be pretty rad. Do you reckon I can solo Aaron with a full stack inside with Scarbrand? There's a bunch of... Uh, I mean, it depends. Yeah, I don't know what your itemization looks like, so it's a little bit tricky to answer that, my friend. All right. Ah, uh, perfect. I don't know why the players are having problems joining here. They've both been silent. Maybe their computers crashed or something. Who knows? Well, we will see in a second. Nonetheless, more time to hang out and chill. Hammond, Legions of Voltron, yes. They're coming. Gotta meet that release bug quota. I know, what is it, man? What is it? God. Yeah, it's been a pain for sure. But, but yeah, they're going to be pretty cool. Um, I was actually watching some of the... Uh, has anybody actually in chat gathered and watched the, um, the Hammer and Bolter series that was done on the Warhammer streaming service? 
I watched a couple clips on YouTube that I was able to find, and they were actually, some of them looked pretty cool. I watched the Death Guard one a little bit, and then there was one for Black Legion too, which was pretty cool. Did anybody get a chance to watch those? I think there's like 10 episodes or something, right? Are they, In your opinion, like what other, you know, things did they have on there? Is it worth getting the service? This is essentially what I'm asking. Uh, is that guys? Are they like in a battle or something? And it just like kicked me out. Let's see here. It says they've been in Total War Warhammer for 20 minutes. That would be pretty troll for sure. That would be like a first evolution. Otherwise they just like play a warm up game. Okay. All right, perfect. I just I got a response from one of them, so I don't know if it kicked him out. Because usually the desync bug actually karate chops everyone at once, but in this case it may have uh, may have only karate chopped some of us. Okay, so the clip's cool, but sadly the whole show is not that good. Yeah, okay, I keep thinking I ought to get it warmer. Good old day. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I just want to enjoy it, but don't get your hopes up. Yeah, I'm curious what other shows are on there. Like, are there actually like full episodic shows or is it mostly like little, like smaller projects and, and that type of thing? Like, do any of them have like a long term like, okay, this is like eight to ten episodes and I'm going to watch like a show here, basically. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, the Writhing Fortress is here. All right, guys, just give me one second. And what was the name of the other player here? Perfect. All right, they finally made it back in. <laughs> uh, it's been 10,000 years. Hey, Brian, thank you for the tenor. Hey, Taryn, keep up the great work with the content. Love every minute of it. Any suggestions for a new player getting into Total War Warhammer 3 multiplayer? I'm nervous about starting. Uh, yeah, so honestly, one of the first suggestions I would have would be to join our community, the uh, multiplayer Discord we run. It's a really good place for getting into events and also for practicing. Uh, on ladder, you can get a fair amount of practice, of course, but I would say like practicing with a, a really solid, friendly multiplayer community is going to be a little bit more efficient. Also, it's like a gateway into uh, like events. But yeah, like honestly, you're joining right now, I would say in the dark ages of Total War Warhammer multiplayer, like it's it's definitely at the lowest it's been, uh, I would say, in years. But, you know, there is hope. And obviously when the old world factions get added back in and different things like that. So take it with a grain of salt. It's going to be a lot better probably in six months from now. But for now, we're certainly in the dark ages to an extent. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. Really appreciate that. And uh, you can do that by going to the website, totaltavern.com. It's listed in the dis uh, description below, and you can join the Discord up top. Hey, Particular Play Paint. Hey, Turin. Here's my tribute to the Wookiee Claw. Uh, if possible, add some of it to the prize pool. Sorry for the delay. Hey, no worries, man. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully you're uh, ready to party. So do I have them on the wrong sides? Let's see. I might have them on the wrong sides. All right. So we need to flip them around. Perfect. And perfect. So now they have the Defender and Attacker. They will do the same armies they did before, and we'll get started. And for anybody watching after the fact, we'll have a nice little timestamp for you. So you can find your way to the first battle. All right, all right. Hey, particular play paint, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Welcome. All right, we're officially loading in. The Writhing Fortress is here. Chaos Calls. And we will uh, see what sort of funny business we can happen. People can uh, still in Warhammer 2. Yeah, people still play campaign on Warhammer 2, but nobody really plays the multiplayer there anymore. Uh, are people playing Warhammer 1 multiplayer? No, not really. And uh, b uh, yes, it's free on the Epic Store, but I'm pretty sure that um, the games you need to buy need to be on the same platform. So like, for example, you need to have all your games on Steam or all of them on the other store. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to have access. It won't. It doesn't have like the cross functionality. Like if you have one on one and one on the other, like they're not going to combine when you play on one, which is really not good, especially for multiplayer. So make sure like you choose carefully in terms of where you play. That's something I'm not sure, but I'm yeah, I think that's the case. 
Somebody would have to confirm that, but just a warning, just a warning there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are on the first map, the Writhing Fortress, Chaos Calls, and uh, it is going to be Ogres and Corn. It actually makes sense that Corn would be defending this fortress. I'm not sure if they're the defenders in the first game, but we'll certainly be finding out in just a second as we do load in. So, Siege Battle Tournament, best of two. Two games total per series max, and they both take turns defending, and the parameters for victory are determined by the rate at which individuals capture and or defend the city. So that is the kind of tiebreaker, assuming... You know, one player wins both, or, or if both players win, is the attacker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, for for some reason, I thought Corn was actually the uh, the ogre army is like so much bigger, like number wise. But that's just because there's so many noblars, right? Which is actually a pretty good idea. I like that from Helge because basically, in theory, what this allows him to do is tar pit his opponent's advance and really, really drag him through the mud using the towers and some of those different elements and things like that. Chris, welcome. Appreciate the fiver. Excited for another streamy rock. Hey, it's gonna be good. It's going to be good for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it, Chris. So looking at the Coronate Army, it is going to be Bloodletters, but he really invested in heavy monstrous infantry, so he's got a fair amount of Minotaurs with great weapons, which of course against Chungus Kingdoms are theoretically good. Uh, they're high armored, so things like Ogre Bulls aren't really going to damage them that much, and they also have anti-large. So I feel like personally Minotaurs with great weapons do need a cost reduction. I feel like they could probably be reduced by 200 gold or maybe 100 and would be in a good place. Speaking of, uh, I have patch notes that I've been kind of working on with some competitive multiplayer guys. And uh, so, yeah, this is another interesting thing I was thinking. So if we get the Creative Assembly patch this week and it really just doesn't do anything for multiplayer, like the balance isn't very good, like whatever, uh, we are working on potentially having the patch notes that I've been working on with com actual competitive multiplayer guys and doing a mod. So then we could host tournaments with this mod and it's like a balancing mod for multiplayer that potentially we could experiment with and see... What you know, if it makes factions like Nurgle more viable and all that. So it's just something that if the mod doesn't really address it and the meta continues to be really just like Zinch and Ogre favored, then we can we can take it into our own hands to an extent. Horus, finally catching up on your stream off. Hey, well, yeah, Glory Helm's deep all day, man. So Korn is actually going for a dual-pronged attack. They have Minotaurs and Spawn on both sides, each of which is going to be assisted by a cultist, and it looks like it is going to be an Exalted Bloodthirster. Now for Ogres, they just have a super, super wide thick army. Super wide. And yes, to answer your question pertaining to the attacker and defender, the corn army has 18,000 gold and the ogre army has about 12,400, if I'm not mistaken. So it, 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 it might look like the corn army is like not as expensive, but it is because it has minotaurs with gray opens, it has demons, it has more expensive infantry. And the ogre army really is just like a bunch of haggard units everywhere, which is kind of smart, right? For a siege battle, because, you know, the noblars can man towers and they can shoot and get a ton of value from the tower positions and they can really, really cackle for sure. Now, looking on the other side, it is going to be more Ogre Bulls as well as uh, just Noblars. Yeah, man. That's why this army seems so, so, like, <laughs> so big. Yeah, it's just because it's all chaff units. I mean, there is a there's a couple bull units, but for the most part, it's very chaff-centric with some Saber Tusks and a Slaughtermaster of the Great Maw. So, good luck. Have fun to these players. We will see. The walls are going to be very lightly manned. Noblar Trappers are going to be holding here. Uh, you know, there's, there's various defensive positions. It's not like you would... Ex I actually expected siege battles to be kind of like everybody just camps in one position and just, you know, like holds the middle or whatever and just tries to use choke points. But it's actually not quite like that as far as what we've seen in the competitive play uh, because they don't want to be losing their supply locations, right? If the enemy captures all the supply locations, they get a huge stat buff in their army in conjunction with having a bigger force. And also you want to take advantage of using some of these towers on the outside, right? Like these piercing towers, take a look at the damage here. You'll see them shooting into the minotaurs and spawn as they do approach the, uh, the keep here. And doing some respectable damage. And the Noblars can simply just run away when the position gets uh, gets a little bit tricky. So we will see. Noblar Trappers cackling up in the high ground. Uh, Going to be shooting into the Minotaurs of Corn, And here they come. Blasting away. What kind of damage are they getting? Minotaurs do have 70 armor against the very light DPS of the Noblar Trappers. On the other side of the city, I would imagine something similar is happening. Oh, okay. Corn's, Corn's not having this one. He's got his Greater Demon up on the wall. And the Exalted Bloodthirster is going to be, uh, you know, bringing the milkshake here. And you can see all of the little Noblars are going to be getting punished. Fury is very, very good here. I love the Fury pick. Because basically they can swarm things off walls. Now, Ogres obviously can't man the walls with their actual monstrous infantry. They have to use Noblars. So I think the Furies are an incredible pick here. Now, Ogres look to be taking a bit of a Helm's Deep here. Sending some Bulls over, maybe. So the Bulls are going to be surging down the street. Maybe looking to defend that gate. But I don't think so. Uh, they could roadblock, like roadblocking is a very viable strategy in this game mode because obviously it gives you time to build up towers. So if you want to like throw some chaff and save up for like a 2,000 gold tower or something like that, I think that is, uh, that's going to be something. So 
Looks like the walls are being uh, climbed here by some of the blood letters of corn. So uh, look at that. They actually, they actually like that animation. Actually, looks pretty good. Like normally, the ladder climbing looks pretty awful in a lot of units, but the blood letters it looks pretty respectable. These demons, uh, they have practiced with some of these mortal devices. And the first of the blood letters will be getting up here, and they are going to be doing some work. Every time I see someone pop over the ramparts, there it reminds me of that scene from Lord of the Rings when you have the Urukai. Remember they first like pop over the wall and then like one of them gets groin shotted? It always reminds me of that. I'm like expecting to see that for some reason, which is pretty fun. So yeah, obviously Naldar Trapper is going to get massacred. It, it's going to take some time, obviously, because the blood letters are trickling up. And it looks like Corn has found their way into the city. So on the other side, the walls were not very heavily defended. It's going to be interesting to see the different tactics. And I've seen a lot of people actually defending wall or gates like this. Like having a halberd unit or just like an infantry unit in there to cast some magic, like using the Ogre Power Fist could have been pretty good. But now the Minotaurs of Corn have searched into the city, and uh, they are, they're looking for some of these ogres who are retreating backwards a little bit. The Minotaurs, I think, are about the same speed. Yeah, they've, they're slightly faster, actually. They have 56 speed against the 54 of the, uh, of the bulls here. So should be able to catch them. We'll have to see. A little bit of lag here. Hopefully there's no dreaded disconnects or anything like that. That would be a lovely way to start. Classic stuff. Uh, can we get some dedicated servers, please? Where is Gimli with his, gro his groin-focused axe? I know. I know. Well, hopefully it's not a disconnect. I mean, it's early enough in the game that we could just replay it if there was such a disconnect, but I would rather obviously not have to deal with that. Hmm. You know, we didn't have any today either. I think I'm still here. Yeah, it looks like it's not on my end, so I think we're I think we're chilling. Poor Noblars, yeah, that's that's their fate. That's their fate. It's just to get owned. I'm not going to minimize because it could like slow down the game, and it looks like we did have a drop, unfortunately. So the ogres dropped. So it was pretty early in the game. Obviously, no decisive plays or anything like that. So we can just we could just replay that one. And if he drops again, though, we're just going to eliminate him from the event, and we'll uh, we'll move on to the next match. So usually that's kind of the cushion we have. So let me go ahead and invite that individual back. And hopefully it was just a small thing. Rest in pepperoni here. All right. So rejoin. And boom, copying for the players here. Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. Well, you know, it's all good. You got to uh, you got to hear the basics pertaining to the rules. And now we truly have a, a bigger group here, so less people will miss the first game. I know. What can you do, man? That's that's total War Warhammer multiplayer. We have all sorts of all sorts of bugs like that. It's always a good time. All right. So uh, if we do have a second crash, though. Well, I guess uh, I would defer that to you, Yumais, since you're, you're kind of adminning the event. So if there's another crash, you let me know what you want to do, since I'm just casting today. All right, so same armies, and uh, we will just get it going again, and it should be pretty quick. Uh, how many players? It was a smaller tournament. I think like, like 18, 20 people signed up, give or take. Yeah, I don't know how many ended up playing in the end, but we'll, uh, we'll fire this bad boy up, and hopefully we don't have a disconnect here this time. I know, Dawn of War has the sound bug, and we just have desyncs. Hmm. Drop, drop a like for the stream. Help me help the man out. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. So, yeah, it's going to be Slaughtermaster the Great Maw against the Exalted Bloodthirster. We saw this. The Writhing Fortress. We've seen the pregame. We had a little warm-up there. A little vocal warm-up for myself. And, yeah, it's going to be great. Unfortunately, I don't know any Spanish. Have you talked about these Space Dwarves in 40k? Oh, man, you know, I don't know. I don't know, because, like, a full army is, gonna, is so expensive to get in Warhammer. Especially, like, the prices have been going up, too. Like, probably, like, it's really easy to build, actually, new armies if there's, like, a good starter box because people put them up on eBay, like, the parts of the box they don't want. So if they do, like, the the the, the Space Dwarves, if they, get, if they get, like, a good starter box, maybe I would consider going into it, but it's really, really pricey. Yeah, it's pricey. So, we're back. Round two. This is the official first game, so welcome to the tournament, everyone. Hopefully, we'll uh, have some consistency here. And no more game crashes. Yes. What is the fund handicap? So, to answer your question, it is 18,000 for the attacker, and the defender has about 6,000 less. They have like 12.4, I think. It's in that ballpark. So, of course, the defender has walls, they have towers, they have choke points that the opponent is the, uh, you know, is the aggressor on. So, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff like that. But yeah, it's been a pretty fun format so far. I have actually played a couple siege battles that I really, really enjoyed. I thought about maybe doing a stream where I play siege battles and Kind of give you guys a look into that, but it's pretty cool to have a little tournament here. And uh, of course, we're in the top four right now. 3D printers are getting way, way cheaper though. Yeah, they are. 12,600 versus 18,000. Yes, so that is the fund according to uh, Umize here, which is great. Yeah, so I, I've got like a full Death Guard army though. I got like 3,000 points. And then for Black Legion, I have a pretty big army as well. So that, it's I don't really need to get more stuff per se. 
I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good with those forces. And Chaos is about to get an update. They're about to get the new codex as well. So yeah, looks like the deployment's going to be pretty much the same as the first game we saw. We are going to see Corn deploying on the far side here and doing a dual pronged attack. Can the defender see the attacker's displacement? Yeah. So how it works is the attacker has to deploy their entire army, and then they let the defender know they're finished, and then the uh, defender will counter deploy them. So you have to let them know via Discord, like, hey, I'm, I'm finished, and now you can deploy uh, free will. Otherwise, it would just be dumb. It would just be like, uh, like there would be one second left on the timer, and they would just switch their deployment to the other side, and like it would just be pointless. That's kind of like in some of the earlier head-to-head -head campaigns I did with Italian Spartacus back in the day. That was, that was like a really recurring common theme, was, which was really, really funny. Which is like the haggard like jump deployments at the last second. Yeah. Those were the days. How many of you guys were here? How many of you guys in chat were here for the first head-to-head -head campaign I did with Italian Spartacus, which was myself on Archeon and he was on the Empire, Volkmar the Grim? And that was back when like witch hunters could assassinate legendary lords. Oh my god, Archeon just kept getting chain killed by like haggard level one witch hunters. It was so funny. Alright, guys, game one here in the tournament. This is the Siege Tournament. Towers here shooting downtown. Immediately going into the Corn 8 forces. So for the Corn deployment, we do have the Corn doing a, a dual-pronged Corn attack. Corn of the Cob. Minotaurs, Bloodletters, and Spawn with the Cultists on this side and on the other side of the city. Corn is going to be getting pretty aggressive using Furies. And is going to be attacking into the Noblars up on the walls, as we have seen historically. Bloodletters is going to be screaming into the gates, obviously, in this case. Uh, there is a 20-minute time limit, so in the parameters of the Siege Tournament... You do have 20 minutes to capture the city, right? So uh, there is a little bit of pressure. It's not like you can take super long. Obviously, you have enough time to go around the city and capture objectives and things like that. Because capturing the minor supply locations does indeed give you uh, benefits, right? It gives you a bunch of different buffs for your army. So it is it is typically worth doing, but you have to kind of weigh the value of that. So just kind of imagine a situation where there's a 20 minute timer. And if you don't take the city quick enough, the enemy reinforcements will arrive and you're going to be in some danger. So yes. I do remember the glory days of no healing caps. Yeah, those were those were fun. Anyways, ogres just kind of holding up in the middle. They're not going to be defending the wall super heavily outside of having a couple noblars here. I've seen some games with Grand Cathay where Cathay really likes to kind of defend the gates a little bit more because for Cathay, it's super cost effective, right? To put like a halberd or some really tanky infantry right here and just kind of try and hold the walls because obviously as the defender, you know where your opponent's going to be coming from so you can deploy, but ogres obviously can't man walls. Uh, the Noblars can, the Noblar Trappers, but the Ogre Bulls are not able to do that. So it's a little bit of a tricky pickle for them. Now on the other side of the city, the Cornate forces have broken through. The Great Demon going to be flying overhead, looking very scary. I feel like Ogres wouldn't be like as afraid of like demons and stuff as like humans would. I don't know. I feel like the Ogres probably are just like... They probably just think of it as food. Although, if I'm not mistaken, some of you lore folks can correct. But... Demons, I do not think, would provide any sustenance to the ogres if they were able to, you know, feast a little bit. So, because I think they would just, like, you know, manifest back into the warp wherever they came from. But yeah, corn is through on both sides. Ogres are going to probably fall back in Helm's Deep in the middle, it looks like. So, are we seeing any tower constructions? Not yet. It looks like we do have several options here, and you can mouse here. So, if you guys are new to siege battles, you can always put your mouse over the, this building and see what they're attached to. I don't know if there's actually any towers in the middle. Yeah, I'm not looking. It looks like just like choke points and things like that. Uh, but this is the more important one to defend to an extent. The Victory Plaza does give five victory tickets per second. So the problem is if Corn is allowed to take that outside point, they're really good to be cackling. So we do get some Furies moving in on Lead Belchers. So Lead Belchers got a little bit out of position. Looks like they moved in to try and attack the Greater Demon. He comes in with a whip and gives them the dirty. And a basic Ogre Bull is going to be surging forward to intercept those Furies. And you can see the damage value being done by both players so far, right? So if it's even, that's really not good for the Defender, which is the Ogre Kingdoms here. Ogre Kingdoms are allocating a large portion of their army to try and hold back the Tide of Corn here. The Minotaurs as well as the Spawn of Corn, but it looks like they're probably just going to be overwhelmed and surrounded here. So now we get Bloodletters moving towards the back of the city, and it's looking like the Ogre defense is certainly in a very precarious situation. Here we get Trappers, and this is definitely a better point for them, as well as the Lord, the Slaughtermaster, holding back some of the demons, but the Cultists did drop a summon behind the Noblars, which is probably going to break their will very quickly. And here is where the Cannon Tower is. So we do have an Ogre Cannon Tower, and uh, these towers are very, very strong for sure. You can see it's been shooting into the back of some of these Minotaurs right here, blasting into some of the Bloodletters, which are getting worn down and broken. 
and it's not going too great for those bad boys. Now, on the other side, the Ogres do have a very open defense, not really taking advantage of the choke points as much as I would like to see. I would definitely like to see a little bit more defensive action here, but the Cornate army really able to just get good value, and Corn is actually ahead on value, and they're the attacker, which means they have like a massive, massive lead on the Ogre army. Now, Ogres, of course, could fall back on their towers and the uh, choke point here in the middle. How it works in Siege Battles is you have a couple capture points. So you can see now, um, I don't think Korn has any of the, the minor victory locations. I think they're just straight up going for blood. But Ogres will be getting a defense bonus for holding the back. So the Siege Defender gets a 15% melee defense and leadership buff to the entire army, which is really nice. As long as you control your uh, key building, which is the one that has a little horn right here. And the Victory Plaza in the back, it obviously counts for the most victory ticket. So that's one way to win as well, which is, you know, obviously could have been done by Korn. They can, they can probably get some infantry back there and do their thing but it looks like they're just going to be going for a value victory as they're just taking down the ogre bulls and i'm interesting enough ogres are actually really good on the attack and sieges because they can attack walls like their basic troops can and stuff but uh on the defense they can't man the walls and the barricades obviously they have some really really good like choke point play here comes some saber tusks in the back so that's a really nice play by the ogre kingdoms able to flank into the uh, to the uh, spawn right here as well as some of the blood letters this could turn into a decent fight for the ogre kingdoms but being down on value like this when you're the defender We've seen this like in some of the ones we did on stream the other day. Oh, and the Power Fist goes down for the Ogres. Going to be blasting those Blood Letters. Granted, they do have 25% spell resist, so it's not too bad for them. But we have seen the Defender use the Towers you know, quite well and go up by, let's say, like four or 5,000 value. Then the Attacker starts to get in. But in this case, it seems like the Ogres are just having a field day here. Granted, nice pick as well. Uh, this really, really expensive Minotaur here. Probably going to get blasted by some of the uh, Lead Belchers and also the Slaughter Masters here to help out. And yeah, the Minotaurs are an anti-large specialist unit, so they're not going to want to, you know, be fighting infantry chaff. Now, you can see here, we do have a minor supply location being captured by Corn, and you're going to be noticing here that there is going to be a buff coming down, Momentum. So as they capture objectives here, they get a bonus to their melee attack, their leadership, and their vigor, and all these different things. So they are going to be uh, really reaping that benefit for sure. But yeah, for the most part, Corn looks like it's going to be working towards the back of the city. Going to be trying to take down this Victory Plaza here in the back. There is a tower come in, coming up here. I believe this is like a really, really expensive tower because he's been saving up for quite some time and uh, could be helpful. But I don't know if the Ogres have enough bodies back here. Like if you're going to be using the towers and trying to drag th people through the mud, you're going to need some bodies to kind of throw in front of them, right? To make sure the towers can get their value back. An attempted barricade build right here. So it looks like there was a barricade that was uh, online and trying to get that bad boy going. Well, Thurster just cleaning up wherever he can. Ogre is obviously massively behind on the balance of power. Now, another option for the defender is to try and just last as long as you can. and Because that, that really is probably what it comes down to right now. The Ogre's trying to last as long as they possibly can to make sure to, uh, you know, when that opponent then has to be the defender, that can be a deciding factor, right? So, you might, if you're in chat, if you could actually keep track of the uh, the time in which the players did it and let me know afterwards, that'd be really helpful so I can focus a little bit more on the action. So Minotaurs screaming around, definitely going to be getting this back objective. Minotaurs do not have the same capture weight as like Ogre Bulls. Ogre Bulls do have infantry capture weight, whereas these guys will count as monstrous infantry. But even still, the Bulls are going to try and defend here, but yeah, they're not going to have a good time against those Minotaurs. These Minotaurs are going to definitely uh, take some Ogre Skulls for the, for the Skull and Blood God and all that sort of good stuff here. So big Karate Chops coming in, Ogre Bulls just getting absolutely massacred, down to five models. Cannon Tower is great though, man. Like this is a big power Cannon Tower, but it's not going to matter too much as the forces of Korn are going to be jumping in here and grabbing the Victory Plaza. And looking around, what else do we have? We have the Greater Demon of Corn as well, going pretty deep. This Corn army is like super elite, man. Like it had a lot of monsters infantry. It looks like there's actually some spawns still fighting in the gates over here. I'm not really sure how they got caught up there. Now, what towers do we see left for the forces of the Ogres? I think there was one, and yeah, and the middle's being lost as well. It looks like this is probably going to be game for Corn, and they're going to be successful in their attack. Cannon Tower is like, look how super saiyan that tower is. It, it like barrage fires like four or five shots out like very, very quickly. Um, Andrew Perry asks, do you think the, the gold difference is too much? No, I don't think so. I think that the defense just, the attacker played better than the defender here. Uh, obviously, we're going to be testing it out and seeing what we think is like nice for balance. But in my experience, I think the defender has enough gold if they play their cards right, if they use the towers correctly. Uh, obviously, the corn player took better engagements here. Oh, and the Sword of Corn with the steel chair right there, nuking those Noblars into the Shadow Realm. And that's going to be army losses kicking in for the Ogres. And Corn is going to be victorious as the attacker. The, the Ogre City will fall. And that is going to be the first match of the day. Yeah, yeah. That's it. The big power cannon. Yeah, I mean, there's things like that. Like, Ogres could have definitely... They fought a lot in open field. Like, the Ogre army took a lot of fights out in the open. 
uh, without cannon support, without using choke points and taking advantage of the defenses of the city. So they paid the price there a little bit, but a valiant attempt here by Helge. And Grun, though, is able to claim victory. So GG well played. And now we'll be moving on to the next match where Helge can strike back. And the Ogres are definitely better on the attacker. So now we'll switch it up and players can do their armies for the attack phase of the Ogre Kingdoms. And we'll go from there. Siege Journey, it's fun so far. Yeah, we had our first match there. How much damage does Sword of Corn do? A ton. A ton. Oh, yeah, I need to switch it to the best of two. Sorry. I just woke up, like, just before the stream, more or less. It was kind of napping, so. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll fix it up. Thank you, guys. There would always have to be some technical difficulty here, or else it wouldn't it wouldn't truly be one of my streams. Yeah, it's 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 great. It was an honor for the gobos to die from the Sword of Gorn, yeah. Probably, I mean, hey man, of, of all the ways to go in Warhammer Fantasy, I mean, for a goblin, that's probably not the worst fate. At least to be over quick, you know. I think the worst, like, if I if there was okay. Let's put it to a poll right now. So ogres are obviously gonna be attacking. Hell is gonna be coming back for blood. Hey Jay. Hey Jay, I think is how you would say that. Hey Jay. I'm sorry if I'm getting your name. I know you told me how to say it beforehand, but I'll do my best. I'll keep trying to improve. All right. Worst way to go. Okay, I'm going to put the... I'm actually curious what you guys think. Worst enemy to fight. Okay, I'm just thinking myself. I feel like Corn doesn't need to be on the list of worst enemies to fight because they just kill you quickly. Um... Yeah, and Slanesh, Slanesh obviously like enraptures the, the their victims before they kill them, so that's probably not like the worst fate either. Nurgle, Skaven, maybe vampire counts would definitely qualify as like pretty terrible to fight. Yeah, that's probably not very fun. Nurgle, Skaven, vampire counts are uh, hmm. Who else would be really really terrible to fight as well? I watch a lot of your streams and hear you referencing Warhammer 2 races coming in. Do they have an ETA on that? No, they don't. Um, I actually put in a request with Creative Assembly to see if they could add in the old world factions back a little bit earlier. But um, So we'll see if that can happen. Yeah, Nurgle's for sure, I think, the worst. But I'm curious what you guys would think. Hmm. How do you use monstrous infantry like Spawn? The best way to use them is to stack them on top of your other infantry. Yeah, we could throw Dark Elves in there. Dark Elves, like, I don't know. They're really, like, probably... Oh, you know what? Beast Men are probably really bad. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Professor Pwn. The dreaded viewing from Hawaii. Let's see what you guys think of that that vote right there. All right, guys. Game two. It's going to be AJ versus uh, Grun. You guys really think Dark Elves? I feel like nobody holds a candle to Nurgle, though. Like, nobody wants to fight Nurgle, man. You know? Nurgle's definitely not going to be fun. Oh, please don't crash. Okay. So look how chunky the ogre army is this time. No, worse in general. Just like, yeah. Hey, vampire counts. Nurgle's got to be the worst. Like, nobody wants that. Like, Nurgle is just like, even just touching them gets you, like, messes you up, you know? You're being near them. Skaven, like, Skaven are pretty freaky too, you know? Like, being eaten, eaten by a giant rat would be pretty a pretty terrible fate. This Slanesh should be the worst if you look at what happens after said fight. Okay, that's actually true. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, it looks like Nurgle's pretty decisive there. I feel like being captured by Slanesh would be worse than being captured by the Dark Elves. The Dark Elves would just put you to work in horrible conditions, but like... Yeah, the Slanesh would probably do, do some Hellraiser shit. Which would be terrible. Alright, so, Ogres are on the attack this time, and we see the Slaughtermaster is going to be the Lord Choice. The rest of the army is going to be Noblar Trappers into the Sunset. And a lot of Ogre Bulls. We got Lead Belchers, which are kind of an interesting choice on the attack. I don't really know. I guess they can shoot Towers, which is very useful. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, they can shoot Towers, right? Okay, so Ogre Bulls for years. Iron Guts. Yeah, so it's Mass Iron Guts, Mass Ogre Bulls, a couple Lead Belchers, Slaughter Master, no Gorgers and no Iron Blasters, interestingly enough. Uh, granted, with the line of sight on cities, perhaps it's a little bit more precarious. Now... Looking here at the old army of uh, Grun 59, the man, the myth, the legend. It's going to be spawn and halberds all day. So playing it very much like you would a normal tournament game. Double cultist, and instead of a greater demon, he now has a herald in the back with some chaos warriors. So we'll see if Korn can adequately defend its choke points, its primary positions. Typically, I like to kind of like let a couple of the minor supply locations go without much of a fight. Like man the walls with like one halberd unit and have them go down and like fight at the gates when the ogres get through. 
Um, I, I guess it depends on what you're facing, because every ogre unit has the wall breaker or whatever. So yeah, like these basic ogre units can attack and destroy walls. So my experience ogres really shine on the attack because they can just bash down walls and I don't know how it affects their vigor. Like climbing walls makes you winded. Uh, I don't know if it really tires the ogres out that much. Well, it was something we'll have to see. Something we have to see. Particular play plan. Yeah, Drukari and 40k are definitely pretty scary. Yeah. Dark elves would be the true worst. Fair play, fair play. Yeah, Warhammer's pretty grim dark. Even the fantasy universe. I mean, obviously 40k is far worse. But, um, oh my god, I was like reading some of the lore on Nurgle and I was like, oh my god, that's some, that's some dark stuff. There's a scene in the Hammer and Bolter, so in one of the Warhammer TV shows they did, of a Death Guard sorcerer turning a Death Guard Plague Marine into a Chaos Spawn, and it's like one of the most grotesque things you'll ever see. It's very much reminiscent of the 1980s uh, The Thing with Kurt Russell, where, you know, basically the, 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 the alien will transform. There's like a lot of body horror and things like that. I was like, oh my god, this is like, this is worse than I expected. <laughs> but I guess that makes sense when you think about it. So yeah, the defender, the attacker here, the mighty uh, Heijay, is going to be deploying right here and probably just attacking this side of the city. Although no, we actually get some ogre units being deployed. I think it's a good idea to deploy like one or two ogre units in like all these areas. Because with one ogre unit, you just go bash down the wall and then you just go capture the supply location, which I think is good. I think it's worth it. Like corn probably isn't going to want to spread out to defend against your 54 speed units, you know, which are very, very quick. Very, very quick indeed. Midrakari would be... Yeah, there's there's all... 40k is just filled with bad stuff. Like, everything in 40k is pretty wretched and horrible. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty pretty brutal. So Halberd's just chilling in the middle of the city. Obviously, he's waiting for his opponent to deploy. Ogres are actually going to do a multi-pronged attack, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's nice. They, uh, they're they really fast. Takes advantage of their 54 speed, their wall breaker trait. They can grab all sorts of neat stuff here. They can grab all sorts of neat stuff. Yeah, Korn, Korn would uh, definitely be like... Of all the demonic factions, Corn would probably be the most... I mean, Zinch would probably just blow you up with magic, and that would be that. Same, same with, like... Same with... Uh, or drive you insane, right? Korn is just going to, like, finish the job quick. Probably probably one of the better opponents to fight. Oh, my God. Uh, I was hoping you would go with the... Yeah, man, in Robocop. <laughs> that, scene, that scene is, like... I remember seeing that when I was a kid. Like, you guys remember the RoboCop scene where they have the chemical spill? The guy drives the truck into the chemical vat, and then uh, he, like, emerges, and he just looks like an Ergo Poxwalker, and then he gets run over by a car shortly after. Puts him out of his misery. But that scene, that scene, like, man, 1980s had a lot of stuff like that. Like, those, like, those, you know, action movies, and then there would just be some, like, really disturbing scene out of left field. You'd be like, oh, my God. And you wouldn't expect it, man. You wouldn't expect it. You really wouldn't. Uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Yeah, the thing was probably, I don't know, that one was like one of the freakiest ones for me with Kurt Russell. Like when the dog transforms and like, oh my god, yeah. Yeah, obviously even the, the original Alien is, is a masterpiece, right? And that, that one was, you know, when the, the first operating room scene, or not operating room, but yeah, when the Alien pops out the first time, oh my god. What happens if the Defender wins both games? Uh, how that would work then is there's a tiebreaker based on who was able to, you know, do it at a quicker rate. Okay, yeah, Zinch gonna yeah, Zinch would mutate you. Okay, well that sucks too then. Yeah, there's just no winning there. There's no winning there for sure. Ogre bulls with dual weapons will be reasonably good against some of the Cornate infantry. Granted, they are halberd, so probably not gonna be too worried about it. Looks like the ogres have fully deployed. So the ogre kingdoms here have deployed a major portion of their army up here. On essentially the northeast quadrant of the map and they do have two vanguard forces so there's going to be some ogre bulls deployed down here some here and then there's going to be some up on the top as well now obviously the balance in this game mode is like drastically different in terms of like what factions are good against what i actually think that cathay is really really good in siege defenses with like cheap spear units like the ability to just like throw away units to man walls and get value out of the towers and things like that yeah the thing was freaky it was definitely very freaky oh yeah the animatrix was freaky yeah dude i had this i remember that yeah, that was like, what, 2001, 1990? It was like, yeah. But that was that was a scary one. All right, guys, siege battle's underway. Ogres collapsing on all sides. Going to be sending the Chungus Kingdoms. You can see, based on the pathing of these units, that uh, Heije is going to be sending them into the gatehouse. So I definitely think that is a slight mistake. You should just bash the walls down with the uh, Chungus Kingdoms. So get the Iron Guts and start beating down the walls, because then you could surround this little defense force. Over here, is Korn going to try and defend? It looks like they are. 
So they're sending out some forces here. The Cornate Warriors and the Chaos Spawn of Corn. I think this Chaos, one of the Chaos Spawn over here actually has like a mullet a little bit. And he's got like some Friar Tuck haircut going on. But he is going to move in and try and defend the Gatehouse, which I think is good. Like Spawn and Halberds will hold all day. And, you know, even if the Ogres do win, if you can defend and last longer than, you know, the Ogres did in the defense, that is going to be a victory condition for you there. So Corn. Just chilling out, waiting for the Chungus Kingdoms to get in. And the Ogres, aside from that, are just going straight to the Gatehouse. So they're going to be beating down the Gatehouse, which should be pretty quick. Ogres definitely get through gates fast, and it's one of their big things. Obviously, in campaign, Ogres do have the Wall Breaker, or whatever it is, where you can, like, bash down Gatehouses. It'd be pretty OP if they had it here, but they do not. That would be very, very strong. All right, so here, Halberds and Spawn waiting at the gates. Of course, the, the classic Gandalf meme, whatever comes through those gates, will stand your ground. I honestly don't think these Corn Warriors are in that position. You know, I feel like these guys are, like, super confident, super jacked. They've been taking their steroids, and, uh, yeah, they probably don't care that much what comes through the gate. They're probably excited, as a matter of fact. They're not like the defenders of Minas Tirith. They are, uh, they're quite the opposite. But Ogres are going to get through. And on the other side, Ogre is still battering their way in. And it looks like these spawn are opting to give up this gate. So not manning the walls with anything. So not going to be taking advantage of the Piercing Tower. The Cornate forces are going to be falling back into the city here, looking to maybe defend the Miner Supply location. Or are they going around? Okay, they're circling around. Where are they going? Are they going to go like up in the walls with some of them? Very strange stuff. I mean, ogres are about to get in there, so we'll see what ends up happening. But this gate is going to be compromised in a matter of seconds, and the gate on the far side is as well. We're at the 17 minute and 30 second mark, give or take. So obviously time is a factor, but there's, there's plenty of time as well. Plenty of time as well. So ogres on the far side, they are in. This is not going to be great for them though, and I feel like the corn forces are going to get massive value as uh, the chubby backs of these uh, these ogre bulls here in Iron Guts. I think they're pulling back right now. I think they're like trying to pull back and let the Noblars get in first. We'll get back to that battle in just a second, though. Now, over here, ogres should have gotten through. So the gatehouse has been compromised. And boom, the Chunguses are in. And now they're they're looking for some food. I mean, I guess the mortal warriors of corn could provide them some sustenance. I don't think that the spawn and some of those other things are terribly delicious for the Chungus kingdoms, but we'll have to see. Screaming across, Ogre Bulls moving in. Should be going after objectives right now, so I would imagine here that uh, AJ will send some on over to the Miner Supply locations to get those and to get the benefit. Maybe collapse in the middle. This middle position is decent. It's not, like, too crazy. I think if the Ogres use their magic very, very effectively, like, use the Ogre Power Fist ability and drop some bows here, like, on top of the Halberds, that's going to be their best bet for victory. That's kind of how it is, aside from that. Now, here are the Ogres. They're, like, waiting, dude. They're just, like, chilling. They're like, hey, man, you know, we're just going to have a stare down. Imagine this stare down right here, talking some smack. I feel like ogres would be better at smack talking for sure. You know, like corn, corn, corn's insults are probably pretty lame and one dimensional. They're just gonna yell things, skulls, blood, and all that, and ogres are talking some smack. Now, other side, ogres have gotten in. They're gonna be piling into the city, and it looks like they're gonna be surging towards the middle very quickly, but they could get sandwiched pretty hard here. They could be intercepted by the cornate forces. So the corn halberds and spawn gonna be emerging from their ambush position, and here they come. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, and the Ogres uh, actually do take a lot of damage from Spawn. Spawn hit very, very hard against Light Armor. They have, what, 190 apiece, which is pretty insane. So Ogre Bulls with dual weapons are intercepted, and the Slaughtermaster is now here, and some Noblars are going to be pouring in, while the rest of the army actually continues to move in. Yeah, he's just going deep for the middle here, man. The Ogres, this is the Vanguard forces. They did not even bother to get the capture points, which I think is, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. I guess he's trying to race against the clock a little bit, but I still do think that, because um, he has to try and beat the time at which... His opponent, you know, lost the game, right? But Corn is going to be getting a lot of cost-effective engagements here. Ogres swarming from all directions. Iron Fists, uh, obviously, against Corn, Probably not the best choice. Granted, they do have higher, higher melee defense. And yeah, maybe this little Vanguard ploy here by Grun wasn't necessarily the the best play in the world. I mean, they do kind of get surrounded a little bit. They could have been, like, standing in a choke here. And because the Ogres now are getting, like, more or less a full envelopment, right? They're able to surround this army here and uh, are going to get good value. But Corn is like massively outvaluing the Ogres, which obviously we didn't really see in the last game. So Chaos Warriors of Corn with the Halberds going to be fighting at the gates. Very, very cost-effective stuff. Spawn also fighting here. And the Ogres did end up punching through the wall. So very, very well played there too, AJ. Hey, so he grabbed some Ogre Bulls and punched another gate through, which is great because otherwise the, the Halberds would be supported by the Spawn. But in this case, the Chungus Kingdoms are able to get through and they're getting a much better kind of surround on these guys. So Lead Belchers are moving into the city. There are two units of these bad boys here. The Cornate forces uh, trying to use some uh, trickle-down Cornate you know, economics here as the Chaos Spawn 
occupying these guys for quite some time. Spawn seem like a pretty good choice for defense because of how long they last. They can really hold a position. They're not going to break. Whereas in the middle, is Corn going to be able to hold this? It looks like the Ogre Kingdoms have actually taken the key building, which is going to be taking away the defender buff. So if the defender owns this one, it gives melee defense and leadership for the whole army. But if the Ogres take it, obviously that's gone. And now as far as momentum goes, Ogres are going to be getting plus 5% melee attack right now and bigger and bigger per second. So the Corn Army might be able to win this though. Despite the Ogres taking this objective, I think that the Cornate Warriors and the Halberds and some of these other guys in the central point in the city probably are going to be able to hold this pretty well. And you can see the Ogre Bulls with Iron Fists and these other ones probably going to be forced back. Now Corn is, I really like the way they're kind of defending this in some ways. I think this engagement was a little bit tricky here, but like I love how they have these like layered defenses to really drag the Ogres through the mud. Now what tower play are we seeing here so far? Looking around the city, I'm, 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 I'm scheming, I'm looking for towers, and I don't know if I'm seeing any towers being built yet. I don't know, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if they've invested in towers, really. They must. Is he saving up supply? Not sure. I mean, Corn should be able to build towers, right? That's kind of a weird thing. Doesn't it normally... Oh, okay, it doesn't show me because of player one. But uh, yeah, the middle objective is going to be taken back, which is going to remove the momentum passive from the Ogre army, and also it will give Corn back their, their buffs that they had. The value differential, Grun, is currently up by eh, 6,800 to 46. The gold differential in terms of the armies is about 6,000 in total. So you need to actually, you know, create a 6,000 gold lead to equalize the sides of the army. But, you know, the bounce power is actually not that bad. And uh, I would imagine that Corn does have towers coming up somewhere. I just haven't seen them yet. Looking around, is there any in the back of the city? So you can, if you guys are new to siege battles, you can basically mouse over the Victory Plaza locations and you can see what they're tied to. So in this case... This one, I believe, is just tied to the two uh, gatehouses here. Uh, obviously, there's some tower locations over here that could be used, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's there's some over there. But for the most part, we're not seeing too many towers from Corn. Mr. Pig says, so turn, are you planning on collecting the new army for 40k? It depends. I have to see the rest of the roster. But yeah, I love dwarves. So dwarves are one of my favorites. Um, he's building barricades instead. Yeah, he has. So you can see here we do have a barricade. So it's a blocker coming down. Kind of cool. I feel like ogres will get through it pretty quickly, but yeah, he does block them up. And here we do have another barricade. So <laughs> he's barricaded. He's he's uh, he's doing the the good old uh, dwarven uh, Balin's tomb strategy. Block the gates and survive for as long as you can. Because even if Corn does lose this fight, if they last longer as the defender, then they win. That's how the tiebreaker mechanic works in these siege battles to give the defender a little bit of a you know fun plan there. I actually think that's pretty cool. Yeah, ogres got blocked up there pretty good. Ogres have been sw uh, swept over from the side here. Corn in the middle. Still fighting pretty well. It's mostly cultists, though. I think it's just two cultists fighting. So they'll eventually be taken down by these ogre armies, and the key building point is going to be taken back here by the Chungus Kingdoms. Yeah, so it's Barricade City, man. Yeah, he's got barricades on barricades. And, you know, with the time metric being what it is, that's kind of a cool strategy. I do like that. And you know what? Corn is going to get a ton of value here. Hey, Turn, I asked the same question about 30 minutes ago. Yeah, you know, Brian, I thought about it, but... If the models were really dwarvish and gave me Warhammer Fantasy feels, I would consider it. I've had time to think about it, Brian. I've had time to think about it. But here, number two is up. The big tower is going to start bombarding, and this is going to be brutal. Let's see where it's going to be shooting. I would imagine... I don't know what tier he built. Oh! Oh, no! His tower finished, but it was tied to this victory location. Oh, no. So then the tower instantly gets destroyed. That's pretty brutal. I think based on the time... We're looking at things here. I think that Corn is probably going to win the series overall just because they've defended so much longer. Yumais, if you could give us an update. What was the time in which the Cornate forces won the battle as the attackers last time? I believe it was It was like Corn has held out much longer and they have much more to give. They have warriors on the back objective here. They have spawn pulling back here. Uh, I like that he pulled the spawn back. and Oh, look at the warriors. They actually went over the blockade here and now they're going to be fighting out front. So the Herald is here. The warriors are here. They're fighting back against the Ogres here and doing pretty good. Yeah, Ogres will eventually maybe get it, but the value is starting to close a little bit. The fact that that tower got destroyed is pretty rough. And with that, we do see the forces of Corn claiming victory. The Ogres do withdraw simply because the Ogres did not defeat Corn as quickly as Corn defeated the Ogres on the attack. So that is the tiebreaker. Corn hasn't won on time. Correct. So GG, well played. Well played to LJ there. It was a nice... It was a nice Aggression coming in from the Ogre Kingdoms, but Corn was able to hold a little bit more efficiently, and that was the difference maker. And yeah, I love the Corn Army, Unbreakable, Halberds, you know, all the good stuff there. So that is going to be, I forgot to update the scoreboard, scoreboard last time, but that is going to be a victory for uh, Grun. And now we can go onto the leaderboard and we can make it official. So let's head on over to the bracket.
And Grun is going to be advancing to the Grand Finals to face the winner of Yumais and, I believe, F-Pod. Let's go ahead and double-check on Total Tavern and see who the victor was. GG, well played. Yeah, Brian, I hear you, man. I hear you. I'm excited for... Uh, I'm, I mean, whenever there's a new army in a game I love playing, it's always exciting. I'm more excited for Old World, though, than I am for like any new 40k stuff. All right, so it's going to be F-Pod versus Yumais here. I will make a new lobby just to try and uh, get rid of the shenanigans. Grun, very well played. Well played to both you gentlemen. And we'll uh, hopefully see you guys back soon. Corn was able to hold. I want to see a tiebreaker game where the defender won by timer running out in both games. Yeah, that can happen. I want to see Cathay. Oh, well, if you want to see Cathay, Yumais here is a Cathay main, if I'm not mistaken. One of the few out there. Grun, well played. And now let's go ahead and host. Excellent. So we'll get these gentlemen invited to the lobby. There could be some like fun tournaments that have like land battles, minor settlement, and then like siege. There, there could be some all sorts of like really, really fun stuff. All right. You mice. Very cool. So obviously the players can play the games out if they want to, if they want to finish the siege battle, but in that, in that case we didn't really need to. Corn was able to hold. Hold for longer. Shouldn't you might be playing dwarves? He would if they existed in, in this game right now. He would for sure. Yeah, you know, that's what I kind of thought about the that was I think that's what I didn't like about the um about the model that they showed from the space dwarves. Hey darling, thank you. I'm super hungry, so I'll probably munch on that between games. The smoking hot wife coming in with the food rescue. Um, I didn't like that. The it kind of looked like a Tau model a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. That that's what it was. There was something that was bothering me about the space dwarves. <laughs> Arthur says he'll take them up. Yeah. Uh, no, darling, I'm I'm good right now. I'll, I'll come and grab it in between games. Thank you, sweetheart. So on the website, let's make sure they updated the score correctly. And they will soon in a second, no problem. And do I have them in the right position? Alrighty. And we're all set. Okay, so Yumais is the attacker. It looks like he's gonna be going Ogre Kingdoms versus Zinch. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting one. Zinch is really good against Ogres, but Ogres can siege very well. I don't know about defending. I feel like Zinch is one of the dirtiest armies in siege battles, like with all their flyers and like crazy shit they can do, like Doom Knights sweeping around the city with Furies and like magic spam and all that stuff. Like I feel like they bring so much to the table. Yeah, which is which is wild. Alright, so it's gonna be F pod here. Demise here. Let's update this. Head on back. Man, I really, really want the old world back, guys. I want it so bad. I just, I just want to play like Dwarves and Empire on Domination Mode. I feel like that's going to be so fun. Thank you guys for joining, by the way. It's been fun so far. And we are uh, we are here with Zinch versus Ogre Kingdoms on... Uh, the map is not Altorf. The map is going to be... I believe it's the same one. So we do Writhing. The Writhing Chaos. Writhing Fortress. Yeah. Perfect. And we have another one for the Grand Finals. Which is going to be cool. Alrighty, perfect. So the Writhing Fortress is set. It's going to be a Chaos Keep. It's going to be Zinch versus Ogre Kingdoms. Hopefully, hopefully you might as well bring out some Cathay for us at some point. We will see. How did Nurgle do in the tournament? Um, I don't know if Nurgle was picked today. Not in the top four so far. We've had Ogres and Corn where there was the first best of two. And this one's going to be Zinch versus Ogres. I actually feel like Nurgle is not bad at defending. Like, because they just have a lot of HP, so even if they lose the defense, they can, like, hold for a long time, which is the tiebreaker, right? On the attack, Nurgle isn't terrible either. Like, they have a lot of good flyers, like Rot Flies and, uh, you know, Furies, and the Herald is pretty good on his little, like, Rot Fly as well. Yeah, there's, there's cool stuff. Vampire Coast and Domination with bloaty, bloaty Boys? I know, dude. I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, we're definitely in the Dark Ages a little bit as it pertains to normal multiplayer. Um, hopefully the patch tomorrow will be a step in the right direction. Actually, no turn from... <laughs> That'd be, that would be pretty wild, Hammond. That would be pretty wild. 
Well, my wife in chat says, uh, please tell me he's, th she's talking to Hammond. She says, please tell me you can play tabletop and kidnap me every Sunday. <laughs> you should be the defender first. Okay. Sounds good. You're all changed up there. All right. Writhing Fortress is the map. Correct. Yep. Same one that the other gentleman just played. For the grand finals, I think we'll do Zephbar. Zephbar will be pretty sweet. That's the mighty dwarven map. Uh, are you going to have a mixed? Uh, are you going to have mixed ECL matches like half? Uh, no, it'll probably be one format or the other. Yeah, I, I do think I do think domination is kind of the future of multiplayer because it's a more balanced environment. Like you don't need to have like I don't need to like watch somebody like and be like, oh no, you didn't attack that unit for ten seconds. You're like that's just such a ridiculous thing for an actual competitive game. So domination is like a more self-contained format I, uh, with some minor improvements. I think it's the future. Um, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. I think I, the patch is, what, isn't it on, usually they do it on like Tuesdays or Thursdays, Tuesdays or Thursdays, right? Isn't that how they usually do it? Yeah, I would wager one of those days. So Yumais is ready. He's actually the defender of the, with the Ogre Kingdoms and F-Pod is going to be attacking with Zinch. Hoping for them to buff Cathay. You guys want to actually take a little bit of a preview here. Um, we can do that. So after this game, guys, I will show you the patch notes. I haven't published. Yeah, I haven't published them yet. Actually, I need to finish them a little bit. They're not quite done yet. So maybe tomorrow or the next day we'll do it on stream. I'll be streaming tomorrow and also on uh, on the patch day as well. Whatever it is, like Tuesday or Thursday. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know. Do they do patches on Wednesdays? I don't think so. But yes, I will be, um, I'll be definitely doing some, some fun business then. Hey, it's Professor Pone. It's Tuesday, I believe. Okay, got it. I'm so out of the loop. Like a lot of, a lot of other folks who do YouTube are like just waiting for the announcements and the timing. And I'm just like, I just see it happen the morning of, I'm like, oh, I should probably like do a stream and talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My CSM army is huge. The Chaos Space Marines, it's massive. It's pretty chungus. So Yumais, as the defender of the ogres, what will he do differently against Zinch, of all things? Probably just ogre bull iron fists everywhere with like Noblars. Taking advantage of towers, Zinch will push you off towers pretty quick, or off the walls. Using the Furies and potentially Screamers as the attacker, I feel like that's going to be really, really tough to defend. <laughs> Professor Pwn is everyone's lifelong crush, what? All right, guys, here we are. The Zeech army is pretty massive. A lot of flamers, actually. So it looks like there's four flamers, Doom Knights. We have a, a Burning Chariot, a Herald, Blues, and Pinks. Pretty wild force. And for the Ogre Kingdoms, it's going to be Double Gorger. Uh, we do also have some Ogre Bulls, Noblars, Lead Belcher, and a Slaughtermaster of the Great Maw. We don't have Chad Greasus yet. Greasus has not made an appearance, and he probably never will. Mm. He probably never will. These are These are some sad times. Looking forward to some Steam Workshop. Yeah, me too. There'll probably be some good mods and whatnot. There'll definitely be some good mods. All right, so the battle is soon to be upon us. Players will load in. Deployment will happen. And again, as a reminder, the individual who is the attacker will deploy their entire army. They will then message their opponent in Discord and let them know they're all done. Since we don't have in-game chat, maybe it'll be a DLC someday. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that we just don't even have chat. You know, it's like, it's just like the most bare bones shit. Like if you look back at like games from like, you know, like the late nineties, we had chat and it's just like, we just don't have it here. It's like a feature that just, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely pretty sad. <laughs> like, oh man, wouldn't it be funny if there actually was like a chat DLC though? We had to like pay like a dollar for it. Okay. Let's see. I, I wonder, yeah, we could do a poll on that. <laughs> Would you pay? 99. All right. Here we go, guys. Let's put it to a vote. Would you guys pay 99 cents for a chat DLC? <laughs> what, are the what are the patch notes that I'm working on? What have they done for Greasus? They've buffed his movement speed by five and given him extra weapon strength. So he's like 40 movement speed instead of 35, so he can keep up with the ogres a little bit better, and he also hits harder. <laughs> Look at the 
I love how like there's like a 30, 40% who's like, yes, I'm that desperate. I would pay. I would pay 35%. 35% would pay for a chat DLC. Oh my God, bro. Oh, that's so funny, dude. I, I probably would too, man. Out of desperation. Because I love Total War Warhammer. I love I love it. I, it's been... Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, I would for the LOLs. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, so Zeech is deploying right now. So we have a little bit of time to kind of mess around. And once he's fully deployed, I'll talk about his tactics and what we think we're going to be seeing here. And, uh... Yeah, Siege Battles, man. It's going to be fun. First few games were quite interesting. Nothing like super close or down to the wire yet. But obviously, you usually run into that in the Grand Finals once the players are a little bit more evenly matched. I'd pay for no chat in any MMO. <laughs> I love it. Did you see the news for 40k? I did, yeah. The, the, the Space Dwarves. Is this a single multiplayer ratio? Um, no, I mean, a lot more people play single player, obviously, but... You know, I, I, I honestly think the multiplayer community right now is probably doing better than the campaign community. I don't mean in terms of, like, overall players. I just mean morale. Like, morale for campaign players is, like, in the pits of hell right now. Whereas for multiplayer, morale isn't great. You know, balance is pretty bad, and there's a fair amount of glaring issues and bugs and things like that. But um, it's still better than the campaign people, I think. I think they're suffering worse. <laughs> NFT microtransaction army. Yeah. Yeah, army painter. I thought the poll was taken, yeah. That's kind of the funny thing about it. Um, okay, I think the Zinch army is deployed. Uh, they're still moving stuff around. I mean, they have the big air force here in the center for F-Pod. Okay, very cool. So look in here. We do have F-Pod with Forsaken, Spawn, and a couple of Flamers of Zinch in the back. Flamers are really good against Ogres if they can shoot, obviously, if they're not obstructed. And considering Zinch has the bigger army, it might actually be good here. We'll have to see. And the rest of the Zinch force is going to be a huge air force with Screamers, the Doom Knights, and Furies. Really good at clearing out Noblars, right? Because, like, all these wall positions that Umaiz is taking here, like the Noblars and the Trappers and different things like that, like, Furies are going to be excellent at cleaning those guys off. Like, just attacking them and pushing them off the walls with the help of a big chicken. Now, looking here, we got Forsaken, Blues, and then we do have some Pinks in the back, as well as the Flamers of Zinch. So, yeah, a lot of firepower, pretty good air force. Very, very nice. Whoa, whoa, what is going on here? No way, bro. No way. What is this? Oh my god, I love this. Check it out, guys. The Super Chad Vanguard Siege play by Umaiz. He rolls out here with double Gorgers and Noblar Trappers. Oh my god, and he's got his Hunter here. He's got a, a Slaughtermaster of the Great Maw. So seeing the weakness in the deployment, he's going to be bull rushing out and probably trying to hit this army hard. Oh man. Now, in the city, he's got Ogre Bulls and just like random stuff, like some Saber Tusks and random Bulls around the city. Not very much defense in the inner city. It looks like he's going to be taking advantage of his opponent's deployment and trying to sally forth and, you know, punish the Zinch army. Oh, man, this is so cool. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's look at the army in terms of pure value. So we got, what, like 4-4, four, 4-8. Four, uh, four, so 1,600, 23. And then these things are, what, like 800 apiece? So like, yeah, around like 5,500 value right here. And the Ogres, Gorgers are like, what, 11 plus that? So it's like, okay, the Ogre army here still has, I think, a little bit less value overall. Hmm, it's hard to say because they do have a lot deployed on the other side of the city as well. We got Noblars and a Lead Belcher here and then also some Ogre Bulls and things like that. Very, very wild, dude. This is going to be a super wild fight. They're sallying forth out of the city. The mighty Gorger packs using their Vanguard deployment. You know what I think of when I see Gorgers a little bit? I kind of, I kind of, I kind of feel like they look like Wookiee. Like in his later years, he had a really arched kind of back like that, you know? He was just, <laughs> just all deformed and wild. Kind of give me Wookiee vibes there, which is pretty fun. So yeah, I, th I think the, the, the Ogres are going to sally forth. You know, they, they are hungry. And what's really funny here is that Zeech does not know about the Trappers, nor do they know about the Gorgers, who are all in stealth deployment. Turn, do you have a Chaos Knight and what do you do? Uh, I do not have Chaos Knights, no. I, I run infantry-based armies. I have like I have a CSM army, like Raptors, Warp Talons, Obliterators, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, man. I mean, towers are also giving Overwatch fire. So the Noblar is up on the Piercing Towers. That's like a huge amount of DPS. 
And I think this Zeech, like, Vanguard force here, that was kind of off on its own here, it's going to get punished pretty bad. Look at that. Forsaken of Zeech getting nuked. It's absolutely nuked. But so too do the Lead Belchers. Very nice play there by F-Pod with the target priority. So the Lead Belchers here get owned pretty hard. Power Fist going down from the Ogre Kingdoms. And why are the Gorgers not attacking yet? Yamais has got to get those bad boys in there. Because right now, it seems like his little uh, ambush is, is kind of... Uh, Running out of steam a little bit. Now, on the other walls, we do see the Noblars getting hammered here, but not before they actually do some okay damage against the Furies. And the Ogres over here do Vanguard out. So look at that. They got Saber Tusks that moved outside of the city and are going after the Flamers of Zinch. Oh, I love this play. Putting so much micro stress. So Yumais right now is having to micro two engagements. And here you can see the Flamers of Zinch are being attacked by Saber Tusks, which he might be able to get the pick right there. Ogres are up on value right now, but not by that much. It needs to be a little bit more for this to be worth it. Stonehorn Hunter does move out there, and now the Gorger Kingdoms are going to be moving in. So here they come. <laughs> right, right out and eat them. That would be the name of the thumbnail for this. Man, maybe I'll save this replay and, and cast it separately, and that would be that. But the Gorger Kingdoms move in, and they are going to be attacking, and the Hunter is tar pitting this force, and the towers are still shooting, which is great. Nice usage, though, here by f -Bot. He does get the dreaded Doom Knights, and the Doom Knights are able to kind of scream in there after the Noblar Trappers and do some potentially good damage to them. We will see. And the back final transmutation goes down, does do some good work against Lead Belchers and tickles the pickle of that Slaughtermaster, but nothing too disturbing for them. Ogres up by a decent amount of value. Saber Tusk packs are just running around. It looks like they have actually taken out the, um, ooh, man. These Flamers of Zinch here are in huge danger. If these Saber Tusks are able to kind of swarm on them, that's just going to be game blouses for these bad boys. That is going to be a rough, rough one for sure. Now, is the Zinch army being punished outside the city? Yeah, this one is. So now that there's like two fully erect gorgers here, just fat, just hunger chubs, they're going to move in and just crush this force. Especially with the Stonehorn Hunter sitting in the middle, like occupying their attention. Uh, tower support has been taken down. And the Doom Knights in the back have done really well. Okay, this is a really nice play by F-Pod though, to get back in the game a little bit. Using the a big a burning chariot to go after the Slaughtermaster of the Great Maw with the help of the Herald. Might be able to kill this guy. Okay, it looks like uh, you might as well be able to move that character. Although I think that was just an attack animation. Now we do have piercing towers up around the city. These are the uh, bare bones 500 gold towers. So they're just very, very cheap. And uh, yeah, they do a little bit of damage. They can certainly poke. And yeah, the Slaughtermaster is kind of juking back and forth while the Gorger Kingdoms, how are they doing? Are they running out of steam? It looks like one Gorger is going to be left here to fight. Although I think that fight could have been won probably with those Gorgers being left. On the other side, the Ogres have again pushed out and are uh, doing some considerable damage here to the forces of Zinch. Balance of power is actually reasonably even. Like, Zinch still has a much bigger army. Like, the value differential is, let's see, so they have 6,000 and the Ogres have about 8. So, Zinch still has about 4,000 extra gold in terms of actual army value on the battlefield. But you have to remember, they have to kind of trundle through the city. They have to take tower shots. And Ogres, uh, of course, still have some mobility and some stopping power. And yeah, the Zinch army out here has really been, uh, really taking quite a beating, man. Spawn of Zinch are almost dead here. Flamer is getting a really nice shot there. Beautiful play there by FBOT. Roasting into the Noblar Trappers as well as the uh, Ogre Bulls. And the Zinch Air Force has proven to be very problematic, but the towers are actually shooting them. Look at these Doom Knights. They're down to 18 models. Now the Hunters and Gorgers are, like, deciding to go back out? I think they were pulled back because of the Doom Knights and the Chariot and things like that, but I honestly don't hate fighting out here. I think it's a, a decent call, for sure, if you can just, like, keep their army trapped out here. It buys a little bit of time. And now Yumais is going to be surging back in with the Ogre Bulls, hitting the Flamers of Zinch. And, yeah, this entire Zinch deployment force is going to be wiped out. Meanwhile here, uh, what does Zinch have left? Yeah, a lot of the money in the Zinch army is their leadership and the Doom Knights and things like that. They're trying to get into the gatehouse here. They do have the uh, the, the cotton candy squad, as, as you guys like to call them. The uh, the pinks and the blues trying to get into the gatehouse. It's going to take them a while to get through that gate, though. And meanwhile, they're being shot by Novelars, man. There's just like a bunch of stuff. Uh, the Golem says, turn t times two 500-point towers or one. It depends. Because in this situation, if your opponent's deploying, it depends on their deployment. Like, if they are deployed all in one spot, you probably save up for the better tower. But if you're in a position like this, where they're, you know, deployed like such, and they have two pronged, you probably want to go for two smaller towers, or just save up and get a big tower back in your defense. So the Ogre Lord has fallen. Currently, Yumais is up in terms of value, but not by too much. I mean, the Ogre Army is looking pretty bare bones, too. Both sides have been heavily devastated, but the Ogres are holding on. And honestly, I think with tower attrition, I think that the Ogre Army might be able to hold this. I really like that he surged out of the city to an extent, not with everything, but to keep the Zinch army out there. It bought time for his towers to accrue value, right? So these piercing towers and the towers in the city have been just getting value this entire game. Whereas, you know, had he not sallied forth, Ogres can't really man walls and play that game super well. So he kind of played to the strength of the Ogres, which is speed and aggression. 
Though, we'll see if Zinch is able to eventually get the city. So spawn moving in. Looks like the Nalbars are going to be the last bastion of defense here as the, uh, as the Carnival Circus here moves in. And the spawn slapping some of their fellow blues, which is very, very chaos. Chaos is pretty much always betraying one another. But now we get Ogre Bulls as well as Nalbar Trappers rushing to intercept this gatehouse. Whereas on the other side... Ooh, that's a little bit of a risky play. How did the Herald the Herald ended up down here getting actually attacked by Gorgers? And the Stonehorn Hunter. Yeah, guys, Zinch got wiped over here. Oh, my God. Look at that. Completely gone. Completely gone. So, yeah, we can use Siege equipment in these battles, but I think for today, today's like a test run for the format to see if people like it and all that. Um, and, the you know, if it was balanced. And, and, and so we haven't really, like, tried the Siege equipment yet. Really, really nice final transmutation there by FBOD. Beautiful. Hits the Hunter, uh, also hit the Gorgers for a moment, and just hit the Ogre Bulls, I think. That was a good one. But yeah, Ogres are back in the city, man. What does Zinch have left? Okay, we have uh, a Burning Chariot that's out of ammo. We have a Herald of Zinch. Uh, we got some, like, random Zinch stuff running off the edge of the battlefield, guys. And I think Zinch is, like, kind of in, in danger, bro. I really don't think they have too much going here. The Ogres have been able to hold their own. And they're really not letting the forces of Zeech into the city, as only one point of penetration has really happened here. Like, the, this gate is, like, the only the only place that has been breached. And the Ogre Bulls are, you know, holding on like champs here. They should be able to potentially finish off these spawn. Uh, Noblar Trappers are actually a really good option for Ogres against Zeech in general, because they can sit and they can shoot at the spawn, and they do pretty good damage against Light Armor. Harry, just a suggestion, but can Player 1 be the defender, so when we're spectating, we can see the supply they have. Uh, it switches both games. It switches both games. Yeah, so there's no choice. I have to just switch them. Yeah. Uh, the supply thing would be nice, though, for the sake of commentary. But, uh, yeah, maybe for future tournaments we'll try and find a way to do that. So, yeah, looking around, man. Uh, the Doom Knights are pretty, pretty beat up. The Haggard Chariot is, like, trying to get in there. Burning Chariots are just so shitty, dude. What kind of value is this thing? Okay, got about 800 value. Not all our trappers, though. They're, they're, they're here to play. The Doom Knights are almost broken. Negative one leadership. They have officially broken. Ogres do have towers around the city still shooting, I think. Yeah, the Piercing Tower is generating just constant value there. Picking off Doom Knight models, sending them running for the hills. And on the other side, we do have the old Herald of Zinch cackling above, flying, doing his business. While the Stonehorn Hunter just continues to chase down the Forsaken of Zinch. And the big old Gorger Kingdoms. Crawling on all fours, looking to uh, be overpowered and clean up some of these Forsaken. Although, I don't feel bad for Zinch. You never feel bad for Zinch. Really good final transmutation here by F-Pod. He's got a little bit of a force ban, but I just, like, I think the Ogres win this. Like, the regeneration, that's something that we're not really factoring in too much, right? Like, Ogres have healing. Although, I think the Slaughtermaster might have died early, so maybe not. Maybe that's not as much of a factor there. Here we do have the Piercing Tower still shooting. Uh, do the Ogres have any really deep defenses? It doesn't look like it. So, man... He really, really played like a super different style here. And army losses is kicking in, guys. And the Ogre Kingdoms successfully defend the city against the Hordes of Hell. What a, what a valiant hold here by the Noblars and Ogres. That was a really cool play. Seeing the Ogre Kingdoms like drift out over here and like, you know, s go out to defend. Uh, Gorger defense. Yeah, we'll call that. Maybe I'll cast that one later. That was a really, really fun replay. You can hover over the supply points to see how many towers and stuff he has. Very cool. Thank you, Mats. See, I don't do siege battles often, so. Yeah. That ogre army was super chad. It held very, very well. Looking here, value. Gorgeous did okay. Nothing too crazy. I think the saber tusks on the other side were pretty sweet when he was, like, chasing down all the flamers. And I think the flamers were kind of a bad choice. Like, in siege battles, maybe, like, one or two. But that was a lot to defend, especially with the double-pronged deployment there. Yeah, that was really a battle. That was really a battle indeed. All right, so now we switch it up. Boom. Same map for the sake of fairness. But the Grand Finals map will be different. I'll, I'll do Zephyr probably, like the Dwarven map, because it's super cool. GG! Well played! All right, so now it is time for Zinch to defend and the Ogres to attack. The rush out was really cool, man. The rush out was rad. Like, he, he, he took advantage of that. Like, I... I never really think of doing that i'm kind of like always in that defensive dwarvish mindset where i'm like oh yes i'll use the walls and barriers we also saw some really cool tactics in the first game when the tiebreaker was online and the corn army had to defend longer than the uh than the attacking army he used barriers to like buy time to win on time which is really cool because that's how it works guys in this format is if two individuals if they both win as the attacker for example or both win as the defender it comes down to like a tie break based on time so it's whoever did it quicker yeah. Favorite Metallica album? Ooh. Okay, I can... Man, I don't know. 
I really like the Black Album a lot. Um, my favorite Metallica songs in general are... My favorite Metallica song of all time is Fade to Black. I really like One. Uh, Sad But True, Wherever I May Roam. Uh, let's see. What other really... Yeah, and Justice for All is really good. Yeah, Blackened. I love the intro to Blackened as well. Ride the Lightning is really, really epic as well. Dude, I mean, there's so much. Metallica is just such a great band. Yeah, I love Metallica. They're probably in my top three. They're probably in my top three. In Walled Sieges, as each, I feel like Forsaken's fan backed up by Spawn would be far better than Loads of Flame. Yeah, Blues are good too, though. Blues are definitely good because they, they're good for just swarming objectives and things like that. Yeah, I love that because, like, I often thought, like, the Zeech army fought pretty well there, though. They did okay. They did okay. Okay, yeah, but, but I, I, like, I, I might seem like an outwardly like happy person, but I love sad music. Like, I don't like happy music really. I like sad stuff. I don't know why. I think I have this like sadness in my personality. It's it's often like that, right? People who seem happy on the surface have that, but, um, so I, I just like that kind of stuff, like uh. Like fade to black. Um, I'm trying to think of another example. Yeah, like Soundgarden um, is one of my favorite bands of all time. I really like Alice in Chains. There's a song by Alice in Chains called "Over Now," which is really good. It's it's uh, you guys can check it out. It's called "Over Now." It's really really good. I love those like '90s guitar riffs with like the kind of like like bleak bleak thematics. Metallica, yeah, they're still great. I saw Metallica in concert like 10 years ago or something like at Outside Lands in Northern California, I think is what it was. And they were awesome, dude. I had permanent hearing loss from that because I was right up at the front of the stage and the, the pyrotechnics went like explosion went off right next to my like my right ear. So ever since then, my right ear has rung. My right ear rings 24-7. Like 24-7. Like I, I just have ringing in my right ear and uh, it's a little bit more sensitive to sound. But it works fine. I can still hear well, but it's just like it's just a little bit more sensitive ever since that. But you know, it was it was a pretty epic experience. Hmm. Yeah, but Soundgarden, uh, my favorite Soundgarden song is "Fell on Black Days." Uh, Metallica would probably be "Fade to Black." Yeah, Foo Fighters, "Everlong," my hero. You know, all the classics. Those are those are my favorites. Nine Inch Nails. Uh, both the wife and I really like. We're in this together now. It's a really good one. But Nine Inch Nails has a ton of good music, man. No Excuses is such a good song, Ballast and Chains, yeah. You know, interestingly enough, um, I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, like, Tool is okay. Like, I've enjoyed some of their songs, but I like his side projects way more. Like, uh, A Perfect Circle is one of my favorite bands of all time. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. A Perfect Circle is really, really good. I actually like them way more than Tool. I used to go to a jujitsu gym in Northern California and they used to play when we would have the open rolling at the end of classes, they used to play uh, a perfect circle and it was like, it was super cool. Yeah. I, it was like a very memorable experience. Yeah. Very memorable experience. They have medication for ringing ears. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. I'm used to it now. Like I don't even think of it. Yeah. It's catharsis. Yeah. All right, guys. So, Zinch is on the defense this time, and taking a look at the Zinch army, it is uh, relatively similar. He's got the Flaming Chariot, so I think that's just a combo to try and snipe the enemy Lord. He's got blues and pinks into the sunset with some spawn, and that appears to be it for his army. So I think Zinch has to take like a much more defensive posture here for this to be effective for them. Whereas the Ogre Kingdoms, the Chungus Kingdoms, what are they coming out with? Just bulls? Oh my god, we got some Cav also. Dude, we have the, uh, the Mornfang Cav with the Iron Fists, the Shielded Cav. Okay, we got a Hunter, we got some Lead Belchers, and a bunch of Noblars, and just random stuff everywhere. Gorgers. Very cool. Big, big attack force. Okay, I did like Korn a lot when I was in 8th grade. When I was a 12-year-old, I thought I was really hardcore listening to Korn and Linkin Park. I was like, oh yeah, dude. Yeah, Spoon Man's a great song, too. Yeah, ACD ACDC is amazing. My favorite song of theirs is probably Thunderstruck. Um, for those about to... Rock, we salute you. is really good. If you want to get hyped up before you do something, listen to ACDC for those about to rock, we salute you. I, I, I don't know. For those about to rock, is that the official title? That song is so good, dude. Oh, it's so good. I remember uh, one of my most like memorable experiences when I was playing high school football. Our coach 
when we came out of the locker room for one of our games, he, pl- he played that song, the ACDC, for those about to rock, and it was like just the most hype moment ever. Yeah. Audio Slave is one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah, they're amazing. Love Audio Slave. Doesn't Remind Me is probably one of my favorite songs of theirs. All right. Enough about music. Back to the action. Ogres. Lead Belchers. I'm curious to see the, how well the Lead Belchers will be used, like what they'll bring to the table for sure. Obviously, Umayus here is deploying his army. Zinch is not an army that is going to like rush out of the city like that. Like Ogres, that felt like a really strong strategy for the Ogres. Like rushing out and trying to goon stuff like an open field when the Zinch army wasn't like prepared for it. But like Zinch isn't that quick. I mean, Zinch could try with some Chaos Knights and things like that. And, like Doom Knights and just like go out here and pick off these guys. But I feel like it wouldn't be as good. Like I think with Zinch what you would do is probably go for like one Doom Knight and like two or three Furies. And go and try and pick off Noblars like around the battlefield. Like I think that could be very cost effective based on the deployment parameters. But aside from that, it's tricky. It's tricky indeed. Yeah. Turn. <laughs> Kickstart your heart by Motley Crue. Yeah, I mean, all, all that music from the that time period was, was pretty fun, for sure. Yeah, I didn't get to see Rage Against the Machine. Never got to see them in, uh, see, see them live, which would have been fun. I really like Bulls on Parade. I know I said enough about music talk, but we still we still have some we still have some time while he's deploying, so. But, uh, yeah, Bulls on Parade is a really, really good song. But Gorilla Radio is one of the greatest songs of all time. That song is just so good. So, so good. Yeah, Philip, that was a good one. It was. Oh my man, corn. I I was definitely a cringe lord with music when I was young. I mean, but who wasn't? Come on. Like everybody was a little bit cringy back in the day. Corn, Limp Biscuit, Lincoln Park. That was like my my holy trinity when I was in like sixth grade, seventh grade. <laughs> oh man, the dreaded Fred Durst. Although, you know, to be completely fair, I went and put on, like, a, a Limp Bizkit album the other day, like, on Spotify. I listened to a couple old songs. I was like, you know what? Some of these kind of go, they go kind of hard here, you know? <laughs> Could be worse. Some of the stuff definitely didn't age well, but, you know, that's just to be expected. That's just to be expected for sure. Yeah, what else? But as soon as I got to high school, my musical taste improved because my high school football coach... Like, you know, he was all about, like, Aerosmith, uh, Van Halen, ACDC, Metallica. So that's when I got, like, a good... And Foo Fighters. Like, I, I he he played those in the gym, and I, that's when I got, like, a good taste in music. <laughs> I would say good taste. Hey, take care, Brian. Thanks for joining. It'll be here later waiting for you. It'll be here waiting for you. Oh, yeah, I love Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, really like them. Really, really like them for sure. Favorite Red Hot Chili Pepper song? Mm, probably, by the way, yeah. Stand in a line to see the show tonight. That song's just so good. I remember hearing that on like early YouTube, like whatever it was. Yeah, it was a good time. All right, guys. So the battle's soon to be underway. I believe the ogres are fully deployed, so now we can actually take a look at their deployment patterns. Dude, I think this is uh, this is pretty sweet. So basically, the ogres went for Noblar Trapper deployments and Vanguard deployments of st- stalking units. So we got Gorgers here, we got Noblar Trappers, we have a Wild Hunter kind of sitting in between. Ymais does also have some Ogre Bulls, as well as Saber Tusk Packs. And uh, yeah, a very big round deployment. Going to be pushing in from so many directions here. I'm curious to see how Zinch is going to be trying to respond to this, right? You know, we got Noblar Trappers here, and then we got some Gorgers as well. So that is the kind of culmination of that force. Zinch on the defense, very spread out. It looks like they actually are going to be trying to utilize all their towers and defensive points. So we've kind of seen two schools of thought, right? We've seen people turtling in the middle, trying to play that way. And we've seen people, you know, rushing out. We've also seen individuals sitting here, manning a bunch of towers and spreading their army very, very thin and hoping that the uh, piercing towers on the outside of the city can actually give them some sort of a substantial uh, benefit here. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see for sure. Now we can actually see the value this time. F pod, of course, starts with a thousand. So the baseline towers cost 500, the piercing towers. So we did see Umayis in the last game build two piercing towers right away, I believe. And you can build them before the battle or after them. If you build them before, I believe they instantaneously build. But if you wait, I think there's a time limit. So typically, I think you're building the two piercing towers is probably the good call. Although, we have yet to tell. We will see. So Ogre's going to be swarming from all directions. I would imagine the first thing to move. Oh, okay, we can see movement coming here from the old Mornfang Cab with the Iron Fists. Lead Belcher is getting pounded. Oof, man, those tower shots hurt. And immediately one of the lead belchers does fall to the siege and uh the towers will continue raining some serious fire so clearly i think manning the towers is pretty cost effective right and does that count towards value 
You see, okay, that's really interesting, guys. The reason why the score last game didn't look that even is because the towers, even though they've already done 800 value, it doesn't count up on the metric on the top left, which is hopefully something CA will fix, although I seriously doubt they care about that. But uh, the value only pertains to the actual units. Okay, that's why last game it looked like Zinch wasn't that far behind, but they actually were because the towers... Oh no, not like this, you mice! Oh man, F-Pod with the huge final transmutation. Oh God, it nails everything, bro. It nails everything. Ouch, two very expensive units and one lead belcher is just put in the trash can like instantly. So Yamais gets hammered there pretty hard by that final transmutation. But even still, you know, the, uh, the ogres will eventually get through the walls. They can hit the walls, so they're going to be kind of pounding their way through there. And in the meantime here, we do have the piercing tower shooting into the other ogre army, which has yet to advance. Yamais advancing from all directions. Here you can see the Gorger kingdoms as well as the Noblar trappers going to be moving in. And there's nothing defending here. This shows the power of stock, right? There's no guardsmen. There's no state troopers here to kind of hang out and see what's cracking. And yeah, the Gorgers are probably just going to get in on that side, so... Pretty crazy stuff, but yeah, that was amazing value from Zeech. Like, nailing them. I mean, the value differential right now is probably closer to 3,000. The towers are doing great work. Uh, ogres on the top side are being hit by the mobility. So this is actually quite good. It looks like these Screamers are going in after the Gorgers. And this is going to be quite cost-effective, I think. You know, the Gorgers don't really benefit from their uh, anti-armor you know, anti -armor here. So these Screamers probably going to be able to wipe them out, I would imagine. It looks like two Screamers, 1,400 gold, should do the trick with the Burning Chariot nearby as well. In the meantime, we do have some walls being climbed here by the old Noblar trappers. So they're going to be moving up the wall and just drifting across looking to capture some objectives. On the other side, ogres are going to get in relatively unimpeded. So they're going to be taking that position. Now back in the front, it looks like the ogres have gotten through. So we do have the Mornfang Cav with troll guts healing them up. And uh, are they going to rush in? It looks like they're a little bit apprehensive. Maybe they see the entrenched flamer position as well as the blues and they're a little bit nervous about it. But overall, they're going to be taking some damage for sure. So big, big shots coming in. Up in the sky, we do have the Herald of Zinch cackling as the spawn rush forward. And the Ogre Kingdoms, oh, getting bathed in some hot warp flame, baby. Definitely getting roasted there pretty good. That's some brutal stuff. But, I don't know, I feel like Zinch is going to win this, like, pretty hardcore in this engagement here. Like, this is, like, super expensive. Mornfang, Iron Fist are, like, what, 1,300, 1,400 gold? They're super, super pricey. So, in this case here, we're going to be seeing the Mornfang cap pay the troll toll. Now, the question being is, the Ogres are starting to fall massively behind in value. Zinch clearly had a a little bit of a better start last game as well with those open field trades. But yeah, man, look at the towers blasting them. Just constant piercing tower damage. Also, the blues up in the walls are doing good damage. We have some pinks on the walls here, but they're not really able to shoot too much. Yeah, ogres get pounded there, dude. Just absolutely pounded. So Slaughter Master, the Great Maw trapped. Ogre Bull's trapped here. But here comes the Hunter. So the Hunter's coming in with the Steel Chair. Going to be trying to shut down these ranged units. And this is exactly what the Ogres need right now. It's a big armored boy to just peel off and shut down the shooting before it does too much damage. Now, looking at other engagements here, we do have the Ogres trying to climb the walls here and not having a great time. The Noblars, they climb and then they go back down. They're like, screw this shit, this sucks. And the Ogres here trying to bash down the wall, which has 800 HP left. In the meantime, Ogres have gotten in, so back capping. Oh my god, please, 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 for the love of the Great Maw, for the love of the Great Maw, will you guys go for the Victory Plaza in the back? That would just be so, so good. So the Gorgers screaming across. Noblar Trappers doing the same thing as well. Going to be drifting back here. Dude, if they get the Victory Plaza in the middle, which is completely undefended right now, that would just be the biggest MLG play right now. Biggest play. And yeah, the Ogre Cav have been forced back. We got some Saber Tusks coming from the Deep Reserve. Here we do have Ogres, I think, trying to bash through the Gatehouse. And they will be through in a minute. Looks like the Gate Health is down to about 2,500 right here. Up on the top side, those Gorgers we were telling you about actually did get killed to the last by the Screamers. So really, really good play here by F-Pod with these beautiful flanks. Now the Noblar Trappers are uh, trying to get down, but Screamers might be able to finish them off, two Screamers. It's hard to say, although probably just ignoring them and getting some other troops over there to deal with them would be good, like some Doom Knights or something. Zinch does have a fair amount of idle units too, right? You got like a bunch of blues and pinks here that could definitely get involved. F-Pod probably wants to... Oh, oh no, look at this. So they're all lined up facing this way, which means that when the Ogres run through, they're going to get like blasted by that. And Ogres can't climb on walls. Dude, that's actually potentially a really clever play by F-Pod. We're going to have to see how that actually unfolds. Uh, Piercing Towers shooting some routing units. Meanwhile, Zinch still holding the gates pretty well. Zinch does have a 4,000 gold lead, but it's actually closer to like, like 6,000 because of the towers, since the towers don't count towards the uh, gold damage value dealt, which is a little bit of an oversight for sure. I think that should probably be included. But looking in the back of the city, I think for Yumais, it might come down to some secret agent play. Like, I don't think he's going to be able to capture in the normal way. And look, he's going for it. Oh, my God. 
And this is what happens when you don't defend the back of the city. Like it's your most important point in the city, right? You're going to want to like put one thing back there at least. But the Gorgers are going to cackle all the way to the Great Ma Bank here, and they're going to be jumping on that Victory Plaza and certainly will be enjoying themselves. Meanwhile, in the middle, another unit of Noblar Trappers does get past the Zinch forces, and the Hunter is still hunting down these guys, but it looks like he's actually on death's bed. Yeah, the Zinch needs to kind of find a way to, uh, to get to the back of the city. He has a lot of time, though. Like, it takes a while to capture this. You can see one victory point has been taken by the forces of the, uh, of the Ogre Kingdoms, which is going to be giving them a little bit of momentum. Up in the wall, the blue horrors of Zinch. Yeah, look at that beautiful shooting. And I think the same thing's going to be happening over here. Oh, man, not another final transmutation. Oh, a huge one going down with the metaphorical and literal golden steel chair. Uh, turning these guys to gold here, which nails the Saber Tusks and the Mornfang. Really, really good value. And look at the Ogres tried to like surge through here, but they got like blasted as they ran in. But I mean, Ogres are very quick. So Zinch is going to have to start defending the city a little bit or else they're going to pay the price. And like, you got to get over there now. I think the two, sending the two Screamers back here would be a good play. The two Screamers that killed the Gorgers earlier, because these guys are just going to capture this and that's going to give a huge momentum shift to the forces of the Chungus Kingdoms. In the middle, Noblar Trappers have amazing capture weight. It's very similar to Domination in that way. That capture weight is uh, determined by the, you know, unit. So SEMs, infantry, cav, that sort of thing. So the middle point has been taken here. Victory tickets will probably start going down. Yeah, you can see the bar is now ticking for the forces of Zinch, where the Ogres will eventually win if they just get this. And the Ogres just need to win this because the Ogres won as the uh, defenders last time. So if they win as the attackers, that would just be a clean 2-0. Whereas if Zinch is able to win, it comes down to a tiebreaker. So that's kind of the deciding factor here. So we will see. 4,000 supplies sitting here, correct. Towers need to be built. Um, I would definitely like to see some towers getting set up here around you know, the whole city, but definitely forgetting about his supplies a little bit, which is a big misplay, but there's a lot of micro going on. FPOD is up quite a bit on value. Like Ogres are running out of steam super hard, but the secret agent tactics might actually win them the siege battle. And they're like saboteurs going to the back of the city and you know perhaps laying some great maw, blasting charges, and eventually uh, you know doing their thing. So can the attacker build once they cap a point? They can, but they can't build in areas in which those are influenced by, right? So he can build on other ones. But the ogres are rapidly capturing much of the city. Couple spawn going to be recapturing this. But when this victory plaza goes, guys, it is going to be so, so rough. Like those screamers needed to run back here. As soon as you see this getting captured, you've got to react to this. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, you're going to be paying the price. I think the supplies are still going. Yeah, they're still going right now. Yeah, Gorgers were able to do the trick, man. If you're playing Skaven, different you know factions like that, having those de Death Runners to get back there and capture the uh, rear of the city, I think is uh, is pretty cool. Here goes the Slaughter Master. He's like, screw this shit. The Zinch army obviously would win in a straight you know trade here. They defended super well. I'm really impressed with FBOD's defense. Was able to massively outvalue the Ogre army, but man, you can't. You got to defend the tactical points in the city as well. And the middle has been taken, and Zinch suddenly looks like the attacker. I'm like looking at the Zinch army. I'm like, is he attacking the city? And the ogres are defending. The uh, the tables have certainly turned here. Noblar Trapper is going to be sent to Tarpit, whereas the victory tickets are still going. So for the key building here, you get two victory tickets per. Uh, I think it's like per couple seconds or per second or something. And the victory plaza in the back, the the big kind of hammer location with the hammer of Sigmar, that one gives you five tickets per second. So something to kind of take into account there. Blues moving up. I mean, he's gonna have to hustle across the city, man. I don't know if F Pod is aware of this. You better grab these. Uh, you better grab these screamers and go back there like right now. And Umaiz has the right idea. He's going for broke. He's just moving back here with the Slaughtermaster, who's actually being attacked in the back. Slaughtermaster might be able to survive. We'll see. He's waddling with his peg leg. He's trying his best, and it looks like he's able to get away. Umaiz uses the Noblar Trappers as a peeling tool. And the tickets are getting very, very close. I think that's GG. I don't think Zinch can get back there and defend it in time, which is which means that Umaiz is going to be winning with a 2-0 in this best of two series here. Yeah, looking around, guys, Zinch is just too slow. I mean, their little popcorn infantry do have 38 speed, which is relatively quick. He's focusing too much on value trading instead of actually defending the city. If he if he took back the middle, you know, that would buy him a little bit of time, but uh, it would still not be enough here. And, uh, and yeah, that's probably going to be it, I would imagine. No supplies... The supplies weren't really used too much, which is a little bit strange. I don't know if Zinch had like some sort of an issue where they couldn't use supplies or something. Hopefully there's no bug. I'll double check with him, but yeah, I, I think there was a tower built earlier, at least one. At least one. But yeah, Ogres are just going to capture the city, man. The secret agent Gorgers, not only are they overpowered in combat, but also for uh, you know these kind of stealth tactics, which is always fun. And now the Slaughtermaster of the Great Mall, as well as the Noblar Trapper, is going to move across back over to the key building here, and that is going to be it. GG. Well played. All right. 
Yeah, F bot had a good uh, had a good opening, but definitely a little bit lackadaisical as it pertains to defending the back of the city. So, um, but again, guys, keep in mind today's tournament was very small. We only had like eight or ten players because uh, it's a new format, and uh, yeah, there's going to be people from all over the world trying it. Yeah, good play from Umai. He he knew he was losing the battle, so he just went and uh, went and did his thing, and that'll be a two zero victory for him. GG, well played. Now it is time for the grand finals. Yeah, and you have to remember, guys. A lot of people don't like who play multiplayer might not play siege battles and things like that. So um, there's a lot going on in that battle. There's a lot going on. All right, so well played to you, F Pod. A good match, and now it is time to invite his opponent, who is going to be the mighty Grun. All right, so Grun. All right, so Grun is on his way. Let's see what's going on. The map is going to be Zephbar. The mighty Dwarven Hold will be defended. And we'll uh, we'll see what's going on. Yeah, it's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. Okay, so just check on the website real quick. Uh, Beemaster saying, I guess he thought that you didn't win from capture points. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess he wasn't aware of the whole capture point like thing as well. Maybe he just thought like he could just keep grinding for value. But yes, you do win from that. Lesson learned. So yeah, okay, guys. So he just didn't think that was a victory condition. Yeah. No worries, man. No worries. I'm sure we'll see F Pod back. F Pod played really well, aside from the from the capture points. All right, cool. So Zeph Bar is the map. F Pod says I had no idea that could happen. I mean, he had me anyways. You know what, F Pod? Uh, he did have you on time, but you could have won. You could have won that particular battle. I think if you had knew, known about the objectives. Yeah. No worries, man. No worries. And F Pod, did you build? I don't think you built any towers either. Yeah, maybe it's an easy thing to forget though if you don't play siege battles often. Alrighty. So Grun is on the way. Shoot him a message, let him know you are up. And Zephbar is gonna be the city. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun to see some strategies evolve. And I actually think this is a really fun format. I think it's really, really fun. Um taking a look here. Quite a few tournaments coming up. Take a look on over at the website here. And I need to get the names all changed as well. So that is going to be Grun59, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that was his name there. Alrighty. And here we go. So this is the 1v1 Siege Battle Tournament. I'll be hosting these more often. I think it's pretty fun. I think it's a nice way to like change of pace. Um, we do have another tournament coming up on the 5th, which is going to be hosted by Human Boy, yes, yes. Uh, that is going to be a simplified land battles tournament, which is like domination maps, but with no reinforcements. So he's doing that. Um, I'm going to be hosting several tournaments this week as well, but I haven't posted them up on the site yet. So again, if you guys want to follow the, uh, you know, all the goodness we're going to be working on and all that, you can just come on over to Total Tavern and, uh, yeah, and you can have a good old time, which is great, which is great indeed. It is a lot to manage for sure. It is a lot to manage. So one sec, guys. Just got to adjust something real quick. And boom. Perfect. Players should be joining any second. They are here. And I'm curious. I wonder what we're going to see. I hope we get to see a Cathay or Kislev. It'd be really interesting to see some of the more missile-centric factions like try and defend and attack. Nurgle would be the ultimate Chad play, obviously. That would just be super alpha male, whoever does that. Yeah, could be. Could be indeed. All right, perfect. I think it's going to be Kislev taking a look at things. We will have to, we'll have to find out though. And, uh... Cool. Looking at the picks for the players. It's going to be Ogre Kingdoms versus Corn again, maybe? Could be. Let me go ahead and double check. I'm not sure how the uh, the finals work in this format. So I'm going to just read the rules real quick and see what uh, how Yumais has it set up. So he's kind of running the event today. I'm just mainly casting. So I'm, I'm learning all this stuff as well. Kislev would be really, really fun to see as a defender too. Okay, so 
it looks like it's the same format all the way through, which means I probably could have started with like when one of the earlier rounds potentially. Yeah, the siege battles are a little bit longer. We've only been streaming for what an hour and forty five minutes. Okay, so this this yeah this is about right. And uh, oh, it is going to be Grand Cathay. Oh, what a hero of the people! So it's Grand Cathay versus Corn. This is super hype. I'm really excited to see some cool defensive Cathay strategies on siege. I think that has a lot of potential for sure. Uh, one sec here. God, I'm such a potato with technology, guys. I didn't think that would ever happen to me, you know? I always felt like I was so tech savvy. But, like, it's starting to happen where it just confuses me at times. Yeah, siege battles, man. Nurgle should be able to do... Yeah, Nurgle can definitely swarm. Like, Nurgling's everywhere and, like, objective play. They can grind pretty well, too. And the, the thing about siege battles that's good for Nurgle is there's tons of line of sight blocking and, like, like streets that are narrow. Like, so you can definitely, like, blob and benefit from the blobs. I feel like Nurgle's a lot better in siege battles. Yeah, I feel like they're a lot better in siege battles. Nurgle should be able to do like World War Z. Oh, where they can stack up and climb the walls? Yeah, that'd be really fun. Yeah, I think Cathay is actually decent in siege. You know, like I feel like this the sky junks are actually gonna be really good in defense. You know, in, in, in the first game, let me make sure I have the attacker and defender right. I always screw that one up. Okay, it looks like Cathay is attacking first against Korn. So Cathay obviously will have a bigger starting army. That's how it works. And uh, and yeah, it's going to be rad. Mm, excellent. Alrighty. Yeah, so Korn is defending first and Cathay is attacking first. So they'll both be doing that at one point. Um, UI update finals, thank you. I will, uh, I will probably do a couple siege battles myself after this against you guys. So if anybody wants to join up, I might play a couple and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of keep experimenting with the format and all that. You could you could potentially, I don't know. Yeah, I think the best of two is really good. I'm having the tiebreaker of time. And also like siege battles can get a little bit boring if like the time is too long because people will just like take an hour. But I think with the 20 minute timer, it puts like, it puts a little bit of a pedal to the metal. Nurgle towers or boss as well. Yeah, that's the thing too because you get the, I think the tower depends, I don't know if it depends on the faction or the city you're in. It, it can't go to game three at the end, Boo. How it works is it's uh, if, if they tie, if they both win one, it comes down to who, who won faster, who was able to get there quicker. Yeah, it's the tournament, man. If you guys are enjoying the format, do drop a like. It's it's obviously new, and we're going to be collecting a lot of feedback on it, and uh, something we could do you know once a week. If people enjoy it, I think, I think it'd be great. Yeah, I think, do the towers depend on the city, or does it depend on the army defending it? Somebody might be able to answer that in chat who actually plays some campaign. Yeah, but I, I mean, I've used Nurgle Towers because I played a bit of a Nurgle campaign. What I'm really excited for about the patch is getting the uh, the, seed, the workshop to so we can actually mod some of the... Uh, like that the Cathay mini campaign is so good. It just needs to be longer. So I think if that can be modded to be a little bit longer, man, we would be super good. Warden, you make my days sitting at work more enjoyable. I got you, man. I've been, I've been in your shoes. I used to sit, I used to sit uh, and work like, you know, friggin' 10, 12 hour days sometimes. And I used to just watch Air of Carthage's videos back, back in the old days of old. Who will win quicker? Poor old Nurgle. You'd be surprised. Nurgle can act, Nurgle actually has a really good air force and can do quite well in these sieges. People underestimate Nurgle speed and like the toads and um, all that stuff are, you know, relatively formidable. So it's based on the faction. Copy that. Oh, interesting. <laughs> taking yeah plague bears nurgle probably would have to change up the way its army is composed with the uh with the attacking and defending right like if you're attacking it's probably going to be toads nurglings forsaken if you're defending plague bears right like i think i think you just switch it out based on what you're doing it's just like any faction they have slower and faster units so cathay's army is extra extra heavy look at that man triple long rider with an astromancer celestial guard jade warriors a bunch of calf a single cannon mind you there's one cannon. Probably just to pop the tower initially. Yeah, which is going to be fun. Yeah, I don't know, Sipe. Like, uh, hopefully there's a, a way to mod it where, like, you, the victory condition is, like, you know, a little bit longer. All right, so, looking around, we are in Zephbar. Zephbar is a mighty dwarven keep, one of the cooler siege battles, actually. Oh, look at that. There's, like, a... Like a tunnel with like a collapsed entryway. What's back there? Oh, okay. It looks like that leads to like the underway. 
this leads like yeah that's oh look how cool that is you can see like the mushrooms of course the goblins would be cackling in there yeah i really love all the little details on these maps yeah so you can see like the underway i feel i feel like i'm some explorer you know and there's a entry to the underway as well dwarf cities are very very cool so yeah, the Defender here is going to be Corn in game one, and they'll be switching for the second game. And here we do have the Herald of Corn as the Lord for the Cornate Army, and Grand Cathay is going to be here with the Dragon-Blooded Lord of Yang. So players will deploy. In the meantime, we'll hang out, enjoy each other's company, and uh, and yeah, that's that. That's a lot of spawn for this matchup from Corn. It is, but spawn are unbreakable and pretty good at holding gates, so potentially that's the plan. Triple Longma coming in. I do like the yellow flag as well. It's a little bit easier to kind of... Man, guys, I cannot decide for the life of me what paint scheme I want to do for my Empire Army. So I, I had a paint scheme before, which I really didn't like. It was too dark. I, I the, the black I used on it, it was just like the models don't look good. So I'm, I'm having a friend of mine strip my army. I can't decide what paint scheme to do for my Empire Army for, for a Warhammer Fantasy for Old World. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Altorf, just the blue and red. I feel like that's such a classic. I don't know, though. There's so many cool ones. There's so many cool ones for sure. Yeah, this map is great, man. This map is really, really cool. You can see like the foundry, yeah, like so, like the gears and the ruins and uh, all that stuff. And oh, that that looks that guy looks a little, little, little chaosy for me. He's got like the the nose horns coming out. I feel like corn is a tricky one to use on the defense missiles. Are huge for defending. They are helpful for sure. But what corn is really good at is like blocking up choke points and things like that, right? So like if you're trying to get through, they have like really elite durable infantry, so they can like bottle they can really bottleneck you while their towers like blast you. The New World Siege maps, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen Outdorf. Yellow, yellow and black could be cool. I don't. I actually don't want to paint black again, though. Tommaso, I'm, I'm like not very good at it. Midland, yeah. I could do. I could do like an Ulrich type army. Where did you get your Empire stuff from? Mostly eBay and like a couple other websites. Yeah. Geltian, Balthazar Gelt, black and gold of. Uh, yeah, black and gold could be really cool. Yeah, I would need to use like a lighter one. I would need to use a lighter one. We'll have to see. But, you know, the red and blue of Altdorf is, is pretty epic. It looks really good on the Demogriff Knights, too, because you can, like, paint their, their armor like this red and blue, and it looks super epic. Gold and red can work. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of cool options. Darkoman says, my pile of shame is made up of I cannot decide how to paint you. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat, but for me, my pile of shame is there because my hands are messed up, and I can't paint for very long. So I, I have the desire. I just don't have the ability, sadly. Um, all right, so is he finished deploying yet? He's not. Once he's finished, we'll go over the tactics of the uh, of the deployment here for Grand Cathay. Altdorf is a neat map, but it's not Altdorf floor wise in the slightest. Got it. Okay, so it's just kind of wild. Is that the one where there's like that huge street at the end that you have to like you have to walk down? Yeah, I think I know the one. Go Sterling with red and green. Ster what is Sterling known for? I, I don't know too much. Yeah, let's Sterling's Revenge. I guess they have the Free Company Militia, which are pretty cool. Go with the light blue, like the Royal Altar of Griffites. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought about like making all my demogriffs like the Royal Altar of Griffites. I think that'd be really cool. Marienburg, blue, red, and yellow. Yeah. Well, Corn hasn't deployed yet. Corn hasn't deployed yet. Uh, they're basically waiting for uh, the forces of, uh, of, of uh, Cathay to finish. So, looking at Cathay's army, guys, we have our deployment, if I'm not mistaken. Cathay has quite literally enveloped the entire city. We see just Jade Warriors into the sunset. I believe there's a single cannon in the back. Triple Longman Rider, so one, two, and three. We have the Dragon-Blooded Lord. I feel like I'm watching a tabletop game. Like, he's literally, like, hiding guys behind terrain. I feel like that's, like, tabletop. Am I playing 40k here? We do also have Cel Celestial Dragon Guard. Oh, no, not the Dreaded Hiccups. Jade Warriors and Jade Lancers as well. And that appears to be it, which is going to be good. That is going to be good for sure. So let us know your predictions. Do you think the forces of the Dragon Emperor will claim the city? Or will the Blood God claim the Dwarven Keep and, uh, you know, kind of turn it into a party for them? You know, gladiatorial pit, whatever they're into. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah, there's some objectives. And yeah, like if it, Warhammer's starting to feel a lot more like tabletop with like objectives and, uh, you know, obviously siege battles are, are pretty cool as well. So Korn's defense. How corny are they going to be? It looks like Korn is going to be giving up the outer city because we saw Garan play earlier. He likes his very elite build. So he is going to be just kind of helms deeping here. In the back, not really manning the walls. He's got some Chaos Warhounds here. He's got Chaos Warhounds here. I think that Warhounds are there to maybe surge out of the city 
and go like try and chase these guys down. Maybe look for like a cannon or something like that that's kind of undefended. There is a single Grand Cannon back here, just one, which is a cool choice because if your opponent builds a tower or something like that, you can like pop it real quick. You're going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to treat yourself. So yeah, very, very spread out. That is a big old army. It's got the Longmore Riders, which are going to be excellent for just harassing into the city. The corn is just not down to party. They're just like, hey man, I'm just going to turtle on the key buildings. And that's all he's really playing, right? He's got, uh, he's got you know, his warriors and spawn here. And he's got his main force sitting on this objective. So what's going to happen is Grand Cathay is just going to come in and capture all the supply locations. And then corn's just going to have to fight at that disadvantage, which is going to be tricky for them. It will be tricky. Hey, Lord Masters here. How you doing, man? Yes, it's a siege battle tournament today. Gregory says, thanks for streaming. Always love to see your streams. I got to head out, but we'll leave it on for the one viewer. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Gregory, take care, man. So big envelopment from Grand Cathay. <clears throat> Sporting the yellow and uh, black. Let's see how that's, that's actually a really cool scheme. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Like the yellow... Yellow has always felt like one of those colors that's really tough to paint. Like yellow and white. Like I feel like it always looks really haggard unless you're like a more seasoned painter. Especially white. That one is uh, that one is one of the trickier ones. Black is also very difficult to paint because a lot of people use like, you know, like the traditional Chaos Black Prime to do their models. And then they're like, why does my model look bad? It's well because the, the, the black is just too, too uh, solid colored. It doesn't have like any other pigment in it. So it just kind of looks weird. Your model just disappears into the void. Typically, that's like the biggest lesson I learned about painting in tabletop. If you're going to be playing, painting black is like have some gray pigment mixed in there too. Or some other pigment. Not just that. <clears throat> yeah, Corn is just chilling in the back, dude. Very elite. It's like spawn, halberds. Although Corn kind of has to play elite. It makes me think like what happens if Corn actually tries to man the walls? I feel like getting Cathay and choke points is really cost effective because the problem is if Cathay is able to set up in the city streets and like get crossbows and other things shooting at you, I feel like corn is going to really, really take quite a bit of damage. Contrast paint saved my yellow paint teams. Yeah, absolutely. How is paint stripped for models? Yeah, typically you get some sort of a paint stripper type thing and you just let it soak in there. And then once it soaks, the paint gets really loose and you, you get a toothbrush and you like scrub it off. It's a, it's a nightmare of a process, but it can be done and you can get the models back like more or less like newish looking, which is cool. So, battle is on. Corn is just like, hey man, like, uh, you can have the outer walls. Cannon's immediately shooting at a, whoa! Okay, this is actually pretty cool. Look how quickly that cannon pounds that wall. Jeez. I don't remember it being that quick. So, one more volley should do that wall in, and then Cathay just moves through that choke point, which is obviously going to be much quicker than taking the gatehouse. I like that, considering time is such a valuable factor in this game mode here. So, the Cathay cannon shoot again. And that wall's like more or less dead yeah 800 hp will that last cannon finish it not quite 80 hp oh my god that's pretty unlucky but yeah he's just gonna wait for that which i think is great aside from that gonna be hitting the gatehouse with the celestial dragon guard all sides all hands are on deck so jade warriors and peasant long spearmen are on the way and we do get some peasant horsemen up on the top they're gonna be surging in and starting to wear kind of work on this gatehouse it's gonna take them a hot minute but i believe the walls over here should be broken down now the Longma Goon Squad is in the city, so the Dragon Blooded Lords and the Great Longma Riders are going to be chasing the Chaos Warhounds back to their uh, back to their point there. So we will see. But yeah, the wall should be broken down. I mean, now there's a breach, and Cathay can definitely move through. So there's lots of micro guys. So if I'm looking at a position, you're wondering why he's not moving stuff. Can, he's controlling like almost twenty thousand. Plus it's a siege, so it's uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to handle, right? Spears climbing the walls here should be able to get over the top and claim the siege tower in the name of the Dragon Emperor. For Cathay, it's really going to be about... Yeah, he's shooting the walls again. Maybe you just take the cannons off. Honestly, you're probably moving the cannons up at this point. Just like Tokyo drifting them over here. Just sitting them in the street. I mean, could they get any good angles? You know what? If you put the cannon like right here, it could probably shoot down that street and get some pretty good work. And Cathay's cannons aren't slow. They do have, what, 30 speed or something like that? So it's more or less like the, the speed of infantry and things like that. Thanks, Aaron. Just getting into miniatures. Got a Chaos Army to paint. So that advice is top-notch. Dude, I have been hated so many of my models I painted because I just I spray spray primed them chaos black and I was like I was like oh yeah this is gonna I don't need to paint the black but don't do that don't do that like either use like an off black paint like that has a little bit of gray in it or you can use like Abaddon black and mix it with like some Eschen gray to get some like color in it or like Mechanicus standard gray yeah dude it'll save you just so much disappointment bro so a little bit of a royal rumble over here what is that aspect of the dread knight that's what that looked like. Might have heaven and earth. I was like, that looks like a death spell. But chasing the dogs out of the city right now. Corn is 
Very, very defensive here. What kind of a tower were you going to see? So we have the key plaza here. Uh, I believe this tower is tied to that one. I don't know if there's any towers here, honestly, which kind of... Yeah, he's got a blocker up. So it looks like he set up a barricade right here, which is going to you know block the Cathay forces from swarming in here. And looking around the city, yeah, this tower, like, I think Corn's going to need some big towers. Otherwise, it's just going to go very badly for them. I do like the dual prong defense, but, like, if you're going to Helm's Deep, this is a great spot. You can get, like, a fully upgraded, just erect Corn Tower back here. And uh, you're going to be able to kind of, you know, get some good bombardments. I think there's actually, like, okay, so we have this one here. Is there another tower location tied to this? No, this one's down to the low ground. So you get, like, a piercing tower here, and then get, like, a more expensive one there. And uh, so that's what I did for my for my Black Legion army in Tabletop. We have a little bit of time to digress. I I, I spray primed them Chaos Black. I then painted them all uh, Abaddon Black. And then I got a dry brush of Eshin Gray, and I just dry, brush, dry brushed all the panels and everything. And it gives them, it, it also highlights the edges of the armor. It looks really good. Yeah, Corvus Black is, is really, really good. I highly recommend that one. I would have, if I could start over, I would use that. Yeah, but Cathay's moving in the city, cackling all over the place. They got their longmas, like, it's pretty crazy. Like, the amount of gooning potential from three Longmer Riders is pretty sweet, especially with the Might of Heaven and Earth. But Corn is just chilling out, man. They're like, hey, I'm good. Let's just let's just defend here and see what we can do. He's just watching Cathay take all the capture points. So this one's going to be taken. Some of the uh, Chaos Warhounds here are shut down as well. FPod says, I never got the love for not holding the walls. Uh, you know, FPod, you did a great job defending the walls. You actually did really good in the initial fight. It was just the fact that you missed the objectives there that really got, got you punished, right? So up in the sky, we have a great Longmar Riders circling about and the Jade Warriors surging into the city on all fronts, completely uncontested. I guess it's a pretty wide Cathay army. That, that could have also been a factor, guys, you have to take into account for Grun here. Is he could have seen how wide that army is, and he's like, I don't want to stretch myself too thin and get picked off, because there is kind of an argument to be made there that if... Corn tried to defend the walls. Like, let's say they put like a troop on each of these to hold the angles. That the Long Magoon squad could have flown around and gotten a bunch of free picks. You have to remember that. Whereas if Corn is like more consolidated and they just focus on the key points of the city, then it becomes a little bit better for them in terms of getting picked off. But you know, who knows if it'll pay off in the long run. Now, Cathay going to be making their way towards the back of the city. They do have a minor victory location, which is going to be giving them momentum. So if you look at the Cathay troops now. For example, the Celestial Dragon Guard here in the streets, they now have the Momentum passive, so they have 7% melee attack, which might not seem like big, but it's uh, it's pretty substantial. Pretty substantial. It, it certainly adds up, especially as you get all these victory points. Corn is going to be getting the main one for holding the back city. You actually get a melee defense buff. So if you look at the city defender buff on the Cornate Warriors, they get, uh, I believe it's 15% extra melee defense. Yeah, and then 10 leadership. So their melee defense is 46, which is super good. Super good indeed. So Cathay is going to have to start pressing, obviously, because time is a factor. And that could be what Grun is kind of playing for, is just trying to like play the time and, and do that kind of style. Uh, we do see blockades coming up. So yeah, he, he seems to really just be going for blockade play here, where he just blocks the streets and keeps the Cathay army from getting capture points quickly. Because then if Korn, Korn might think that they can win on the attack much faster than Cathay. So they're just playing for time and trying to drag out the uh, the attack process. We'll have to see. No towers here. Um, are we seeing a big Chungus tower in the back? Not yet. That's what I would do probably is myself. Is build some sort of towers back here and do some work. But yeah, Cathay is in the city. They have several capture points. This one is obviously free. Yeah, that one's a little bit harder to get because you have to get past the Coronade Army to get this. So who knows? Yeah, I don't know why he's not using towers. He might be. He might be. He's, he's building mostly barricades right now. So we've seen barricades being built all over the city, which is going to take Cathay some time. I really think that the corn player is just playing for time. I think that's what he's doing. I think he's just trying to trying to uh, drag his opponent through there. And we do have a tower coming up. So I believe if I mouse over here, I can see like... Somebody earlier was saying I could see like how many towers somebody had if I moused over them. I don't think so. Yeah, perhaps it's somewhere else. But nonetheless, tower's coming up here. It is going to be, I think, just like the basic corn cannon tower type thing. Corn just standing menacingly in the town square. Yeah, that's basically what's happening here. The first of the Celestial Dragon Guard are here. And now we do have the Peasant Horsemen of Grand Cathay lurking and eyeing down those Cornate Warriors. It's going to be a hard a hard attack for sure. Oh, what are those Corn Dogs doing? You better pull those guys back. Those actually aren't Corn Dogs. They're basic Corn Hounds. And they're going to be running back to the barricades. So you can run through your own barricades if you control them. You can, like, teleport through, which is pretty funny. But Celestial Dragon Guard should beat the Corn Warriors like one on one, the basic shielded variant. But uh, I don't know, the Halberds actually do have some decent armor piercing as well. I mean, it's 1100 gold unit. Oh, look at this. The cannons are in the street. So remember we talked about this earlier? Like setting up the cannons in the streets and shooting down that avenue right there? I love it. It's very methodical here. 
Cathay getting that nice downtown shot. So let's see him uh, ring. I feel like I'm watching a historical game, seeing things happening in streets. It's very much not like the typical Warhammer experience, but yeah, we will see. So Corrin loses the towns. Value is pretty decent here. We do get the first tower up now, which is shooting, but like this is a, one of the worst tower positions because it's like, it's basically in a box. Like it can't shoot here. It can only shoot down the alleys and maybe like up and over this way. I Yeah, and now we have a big tower coming down to the back. This is a better position. This is a better position for sure. So we do have the uh, the tower for Corn as uh, Cathay just swarms in all directions, man. They're they're coming for blood, but they gotta they gotta go pedal to the metal. Time is a factor, guys. Cathay, it's it's been you know what nine minutes, give or take about eight minutes. So Cathay needs to get aggressive because Corn can just sit and defend and, and can claim a victory in that way. But then it would come down to Cathay winning the defense faster. Right? That's that's the tiebreaker just depends on who wins faster. So the spawn of corn get absolutely wrecked here by the Great Longman Riders. They get a nice charge, and some of the Halberd boys are going to move over. How many spawn are we actually going to see go down? It looks like only four, which is pretty cost-effective. And he does rampage the spawn, which is quite cost-effective, because now they're probably going to march to their doom somewhere. Here we get the uh, the Peasant Horseman running from some Chaos Warriors of corn who have the high ground. And Jade Warrior is preparing to move in and fight. Obviously, uh, Crossbows will be right behind them, lending a little bit of fire support. A little bit of skirmishing on the other side as well. The cannons shooting down the street, being attacked by some doggos. Really nice play here by Grun. He's able to get his uh, his corn dogs that were just running circles around the city. Not true corn dogs, but these are like the these are like the the little miniature corn dogs, you know, that you can get like the little tiny ones. And they do take down the cannon. So the cannon crew of Yumais here is going to be paying the price. Though two corn dogs is going to be the price, as the great long riders and peasant horsemen will be able to take them out. So, you know, time's going, man. Cathay is obviously taking a very conservative approach. They do have some troops pushing toward the back of the city. So Jade Warriors, the Spearmen, are trying to get through the barricade here. So Korn, like I said, has barricaded all over the city. And the peasants are going to be trying to break their way through that barricade to uh, to get to that capture point, which will shut down one of the towers, which would be pretty unfortunate, actually. You know, this tower is, this is a nice one. This is like a cannon tower here, ripping some nice shots into the Great Long Riders down the, uh, down the side there. And here, we do have Ye Old Herald of Korn and Spawn just waiting in the back for the final showdown. But Cathay definitely could run into a time situation. If they're not a little bit more aggressive here, Cathay does take quite some time to you know break through armor. And I think that's what the uh, the corn folks are doing. But how that would work is then when Cathay serves as the defender, uh, if they were able to defeat corn quicker, then you know that's uh, that's that. So kind of an interesting one. We'll we'll find any loopholes or weird shenanigans in the rules. Long riders could do a rear charge here into the Chaos Warriors of Corn and potentially break them. Uh, it would take a little bit of a, a moment there. Blood letters are summoned. So these are summoned blood letters from the cultists. I'm going to be getting hit with uh, the Breath of Fire spell. They're just a summon unit, so it's not like terribly cost effective, but it still doesn't hurt. Archers are back, so we do have some Jade Warriors that were being pressured by the blood letters, but it looks like they were able to withdraw. And now Cathay is coming in from all sides. So they are moving here, and it looks like the barricade is being built here, or some sort of a trap. Or maybe it's obstructed because the because the guys are actually like standing on top of it. I'm not sure what that little icon means, but we'll find out. So yep, we do get spears and troops positioning all over the city. This corn cornate position is going to be very, very tough to break, though. I mean, Spawn, the Herald himself is sitting back there. It's like the final boss fight. And Corn is doing a good job holding the streets. You know, they're they're fighting in a couple chokes, but the Celestial Dragon Guard will now move on and is going to be hustling towards the uh, towards the town square here. Time is at about nine minutes, give or take. The defender is holding on, and it is going to take some time to get back there and actually push them off. Value is relatively even as well. Yumai's is up, but again, it's not taking into account the uh, tower value that is being accrued by Grun here. A little uh, lightning bolt going down there from Grand Cathay, one of their uh, their witchcraft spells. And this objective is still owned by Korn. Interesting. So Cathay actually opted not to go for this minor supply location. I think they, they actually gave up on the barricade. Okay. Check that out. Nicholas says, uh, turn if you hover over the capture points on the top bar, it shows you which towers and barricades are linked to each. Yeah. Yeah, so you can, you can do this and see. Pretty cool. But Corn does have a couple uh, towers online here in the back, and they're just blasting away. So I'm surprised he didn't try and shut down that tower position. And then we do get some Jade Warriors moving back here from Yumais, but they're completely unsupported. So these guys are just going to get eviscerated by the spawn. I mean, Jade Warriors have really pitiful damage output, so it's not going to be terribly substantial for them. A little bit of a sacrifice. Now, back here, we do get the Chaos Warriors of Corn with Halberds. And these guys are holding back the Jade Warriors pretty well. And yeah, the 20 minute time is uh, starting to get a little bit close here as the Long Marauders do drift over the city and are looking for any prizes they can get. But I think Korn is getting kind of close to buckling here. Though somehow these, these crossmen are shut down. Cannons offline. Grand Cathay does have a lot of reinforcements across the city. Some Celestial Dragon Guard in reserves. But these armored Corn Warriors are just holding like absolute chads in the streets, man. I mean, look how much cooler these Corn Warriors are than the peasants. <laughs> I mean, the peasants are kind of cool. 
They're not as I, I like Britannian peasants quite a bit more. I think they're just more humorous. These these peasants uh, have too good of a life, I suppose. And uh, yeah, Chaos Warriors here, holding back the warriors, doing great work, and honestly might be able to even defeat these jades. We'll see. And this capture point is being st stood on by these halberds here. And the long riders are honestly seem like they're having a relatively tough time finding a home. So there goes some more magic from Grand Cathay. Going to be zapping. Oh no! It zapped his own units. Oh, that's r that's a rough one right there. What spell is that even? What is that lightning bolt spell that we're seeing there? Oh, it's the Astromancer. Okay, that's right. So he's using the Uranian Thunderbolt. Because I saw the, the Yang caster here. I was like, what is that? The barricades, though, kind of a cool idea, right? Like, being very annoying and, like, keeping Cathay from doing that. In the back of the city, the Cathay Expedition Force, the brave warriors who tried to capture the back of the city, literally didn't even put a dent in. And now Korn is rocking these huge cannons back here. Like, they have this, like, big Chungus cannon tower. They have this other one back here. I actually think Grand Cathay could be in a little bit of danger. They are taking a ton of attrition in these fights. And, of course, it's not taking into account the, uh, the cannon towers and all those different things like that, so... So this victory location still owned by Korn. If Cathay takes it, it will start giving them victory tickets, but it's only two, so it's very, very slow. I don't think it would even get there in time. We have seven minutes left to get in there. And yes, time is the factor in tie breaks. So Cathay obviously would probably inevitably win this, but we do have a 20 minute timer for the sake of pacing. And uh, that is how we do our tiebreakers. So great long riders drifting down there, attacking the cultists of Korn. It looks like the center objective finally is gonna be taken by Grand Cathay. And then they just have to make their way to the back of the city, which I don't think they're going to have enough time. I think that corn is going to be able to hold this, and uh, they will have the spawn of corn as well as the cultists and the heralds and all that sort of stuff like that. So looking here, we do have the Chaos Warriors of corn grinding. Finally going to get that tower down, most likely. How many Chaos Warriors do we have here? Those cannon towers are not very accurate, actually. I don't know which towers are the best for Grand Cathay, like which one is the most most effective. Those appear to be the, uh, the basic towers there. Halberds moving across. The final objective is going to be taken here. <laughs> One might say corn is, is bleeding them. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Value is dead even. But remember, the Cathay army starts with like 6,000 more value. But it doesn't count the damage that the towers are doing, which is really stupid. I don't know why, why that's the case. The Herald of corn. this guy is like, I have the best job. This guy literally just gets to stand there, look scary, has an awesome sword, and he doesn't have to do any fighting. Same with these spawn. These warriors are probably super stoked also. They're like, they just get to kind of hang out while everybody tires themselves out. And they go in for the easy kills towards the end. Britannian peasants are barely trained. Peasant mobs don't even get a weapon. Yeah, they get like farming tools. So this objective is going to be taken by Grand Cathay. Corn is definitely going to be pressured into the back of the city. And this will start the victory tickets. Yumais is going to be hustling to the back of the city with pretty much everything right now. I'm surprised we didn't see Terracotta Sentinels. I feel like they're pretty good with their high speed and uh, they have almost 50 speed. So Grand Cathay does get that. Now you can see the victory tickets are going to start going. It's only two per second or something like that or two per whatever, how many ever seconds it is. So it's going to take quite a bit longer, but... Even still, it's it's a step in the right direction, and it does take away some of the buffs for the Coronate forces. Now, Corn is crumpled here. This back objective is owned by Corn, and the towers are still doing some great work. Oh, is that going to be the Sword of Corn? Oh man, that could be fat. Oh, Sword of Corn, super metal, right on the long list. Doesn't do as much to long riders, but still does enough damage to be worth it. So Corn definitely happy with that. They uh, they're they're smiling this day. And what do the corn dogs have left? Corn at the back of the city does have some chaos warriors. They do also have some spawn of corn. Cannons here. This is like such a good cannon position. It's so good. It's like just like choking here in this position. Like if you were an army with like anti blob punishment, like Kislev and like Heart of Winter and all that, that could be really, really good. Yeah, these are corn towers. Excuse me. Sorry, I, I had it totally backwards. So Cathay now is going to be waddling towards the back of the city. Probably going to run out of time. I, I don't know. There's a chance they could actually break it before all is said and done. There's certainly a chance. But again, time is the factor. You gotta get there quick. Like even if he gets it with like one second left, that's like a big difference. It was the expedition force, yes. They met their doom. So Korn is just chilling. Long Riders like might even just dive in here. Like, I don't know. I don't think there's any halberds actually. No, there's not, okay. So the Longmas might actually do a good job there. And we have some Jade Warriors moving up. We do also have the cannon crew. <laughs> Look at the cannon crew, dude. They're like, they're coming. These ladies are pissed. Their precious cannons were destroyed, and uh, they're, they're looking for some vengeance here. Celestial Dragon Guard, very, very tattered. Only 14 models there, so not too many elite infantry left. That Sword of Corn broke everything, including his own forces. Yeah, you know, Corn is, that's how Corn rolls. So. But this supply location in the back is going to be taken here, and I think that, like, right now, Yumais is probably just going to go for army losses here. But the funny part about army losses is, is that the spawn will not care about that. 
So there goes the Great Longbows. Do they have any buffs? They do not have the Might of Heaven and Earth active. And the Cannon Tower, which is blasting them from overhead. It looks like now some AoE buffs are going down from Corn. Maybe the Horn of Corn? No, I don't think so. I think that was the Herald buff. A couple Hagger Jade Lancers making their way in. Only six Longbows here, 11 here. The other one's getting crumped pretty good. Spawn of Corn, even though they don't have crazy armor piercing, still hit incredibly hard. And Grand Cathay is going to be forced back, most likely, here in this uh, this point. Now, obviously, the infantry will get here soon. We've got three minutes and 20 seconds left. The Corn Army did take a beating there, though. The spawn, I think, are getting hit by a little bit of friendly fire. It's kind of kind of hard to say. Kind of hard to say, for sure. And also, the Lord of Cathay, the Dragon-Blooded Lord here, is, uh, is very, very damaged. So is anybody going to be taking that low ground point? It looks like Cathay does have a couple uh, peasants standing on it. I would have liked to have seen a Sky Junk, too. I feel like Sky Junks could definitely do some work. Wait, what, uh, what do artillery count as for capture weight? You know, I don't know if the crew... I think they would probably count as artillery, yeah. That would be my that would be my guess. So the Cathay Lord actually gets crumped there, guys. But what's really, really good for Yumais here is now the spawn are actually uh, rampaging. So they're going to actually move into the Cathay Spear Lines, which means that Cathay will have a decent opportunity to try and get the victory based on army losses because all Corn has left are these warriors and the Herald, really. But, you know, army losses is going to be much harder now. And looking at this Cathay army, guys, it's actually super beat up. It's super, super beat up there. Yeah, like looking around, man. We got uh, we got like not much left. It's a lot of poor quality stuff. And, and the Cathay Lord is gone. Yeah, look at that. The spawn actually taking the W and they're not rampaging anymore. I don't know how they stopped, but... Corn is going to make a valiant hold here in the streets and try and keep them at bay. Here they come. Rushing forward. The Cathay Jade Warriors definitely outmatched. These, these Corn Warriors are just these massive titans of strength and are actually good at fighting. And Jade Warriors are just like super haggard. Trying their best. They're trying their best for sure. Immediately, their leadership is wavering. Spears moving into the back of the city as well. And we do get some crossbows coming in from the uh, from the Jade Crossbow Squad. That saying did not make any sense. My brain was just like looking for something to say and I just couldn't figure it out. Man, these Cornate Warriors. And I like that Grun is pulling back the spawn and is like moving them around the corner. A minute 40 left to try and capture this back point here. I don't think so. Dude, because I think that Grun is like the Dark Lord of Barricades. Right? Like, he knows time is a factor, and he actually uses barricades everywhere. Because normally, Corn would be able to, like, come around the side, or Cathay would, and maybe, like, try and back cap here. But, like, with all these, like, haggard barricades in the streets, like, he's not able to get through easily, which is hilarious. So, Spawn's still rampaging. Jade Warrior's into the meat grinder here. And Grun is getting a lot of tower value now. His cannons are shooting in nonstop. And I believe this one was never shut down, so this thing has just been punishing the Cathay Warriors as well. Pretty wild. This is super wild, man. So Chaos Warriors of Corn going to be pulling back a little bit. I'm not sure why. No, okay. Looks like they're rerouting here. And Cathay is going to be for sure in the danger zone. Like the bounce of power, guys, is actually getting kind of close. Corn might actually just straight up win this battle. They might just win the defense. It's really funny. A lot of people in chat were saying like, yeah, this one's over. Cathay is going to just sweep through Corn, But Corn is really maybe actually going to win. Like, because what in this Cathay army can actually kill that Herald effectively? Like nothing. And on top of that, like, how are they going to get through here? This is going to be super tough, man. So Corn fighting to the bitter end, and the balance of power is actually starting to, like, improve for Grun. It's, like, going up towards the middle as the Cathay forces get pounded by those cannons over and over. And the Herald is doing a great job. The other spawn are hiding, which is an excellent, like, veteran play here. He's just chasing off some routing units, and he'll have them for later when he needs them. Because these Chaos Warriors of Corn are just taking, like, no damage. One of the buildings there was finally destroyed. It was taken by Grand Cathay, but Corn is just holding on like an absolute champion, dude. Yeah, the choke points definitely pay off. Like, the barricades. The barricades are buying a ton of time for him here, right? And forcing Cathay into a choke point, which is pretty hilarious. And Cathay also dove its lord in very aggressively. Like, if Cathay had the magic to bombard these Chaos Warriors, I think they would have actually captured the point one. If, like, the Yang magic was still online, you know, that would do the trick. But in that case, Corn will hold into the bitter end. It says draw on the screen, but you guys get the picture, right? So Corn holds off Cathay due to time. So now Cathay has to defend, and they just basically have to do better than Corn, right? That's the plan. And if it goes to a, if it goes to um, oh, what's it called? Hold on here. I'll take a screenshot of that. We can look at the rules just to check it all out. But yeah, that was that was a really really intense battle. So now we switch it up, and let's take a look at the rules together. So here we are. And now we go to this. Perfect. Okay, so where are we up here? If the defender won both times, tiebreak goes to whichever defender won in the least amount of a time. Okay, so the defender technically won there. Oh no, here it is. If the defenders 
Yeah, if the defender won both times, tiebreak goes to whichever defender won in the least amount of time. Okay. So if Umayis can have a better defense here and like can defeat the attackers quicker, he will straight up win. If both defenders won both times by lasting the full 20 minutes, tiebreak goes to whichever defending player ended with the most total model counts remaining on the game end screen. This one, this is fine here, but for like ogres, this might be a big disadvantage because they have low model count. So we might have to like rework that. So you might put these rules together. He did a great job with it, but um, that one we have to take a look at. So that's kind of how that works. Yeah. That corn warriors, man, they were they were beast mode holding those holding those choke points. It did look like he did look like he had it easy, but you know, corn held out. The corn player was quite Chad. He was. Cathay, I think, is much better on the defense, but like I would have liked to have seen some blimps, like some like sky junks flying over and nuking positions and uh like other things like that. That kind of like was the classic problem Cathay has in domination against corn is they don't have like things to kill the big armor. Uh, Yumai says, if I had held back the Lord and Longmas, I maybe could have won through army losses. But man, that was a tight rush. GG, great game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the, the sense of urgency got you there. Like when you sent in the Longmas and they just kind of like went down. Uh, so after this game, guys, I'm going to play I'm gonna play some of these siege battles and I'm going to play Nurgle. And so we can test it out. Yeah, it seems to favor wider armies punishing elite armies. Yeah, it's some, something to look at. But like both players going to a 20 minute hold is pretty unlikely, but we'll have to look at that rule. We could we could even have the tiebreaker be like a land battle, right? Like the players could just fight a land battle. If if they both defend for 20 minutes, that might even be a better idea. Like they would just have an open field battle with those two armies kind of thing. I don't know. We'll we'll take a look and look at all the feedback today and decide, you know, what 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 we think is best. Well, what you might as well think is best. Because he, he he put in all the effort for these rules. Nurgle, I don't think is as bad as people think on the offense. I think they, I think they're actually better than Cathay at attacking. I do. One day we'll be able to mount our artillery on the walls. Probably not in this game, you know. Like walls are already such like a glitch, like weird thing that I, I don't see that happening. All right, guys, uh, I'll be right back. Going to get some water. Cheers. All right, guys, I return. Quite curious to see what uh, Cathay is going to be doing on the defense here. Kugath as a siege attacker? Mm, I don't know. How would you attack with Nurgle? Um, I would probably use a bunch of rot flies and Nurglings and Forsaken. Yeah. Could you mount artillery on walls in 3k? I don't, I don't know if you can. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly didn't play uh, too much 3k. Kugath OP for siege? I don't think so. I think Kugath is still worse. Because the Great Unclean one, the basic one, is really good because of the Mortis engine. So, like, in a blob trying to break through the streets, he's going to be much better. I actually installed a mod in Warmer 2 that allows Skaven weapon seams on walls. Yeah, I've seen that one before. I've seen that one, which is kind of cool. The Necrofex Colossus will be uh, great in sieges with the amount of damage artillery does to walls now. Yeah, oh my god, the cannons, like, took down that wall so quickly. If there's two units of archers shooting Kugath, he's really sad. Yeah, he'll probably just die to like two peasant archers. Yeah. Kugath is definitely haggard. Hmm. I would probably be more inclined to take Kugath as the defender. Because he can just like sit with a bunch of Nurglings and hold a point, you know? 
Can Nurglings scale walls? No, they can't, dude. They can't, which is hilarious. So Nurglings have to go through the old-fashioned way. They have to like go through the gatehouse. Or they have to go through a breach in the wall, which uh, Nurgle, I think, can do it with their soul grinders, but that's like about it. Yeah, the 20-minute timer is, is definitely better. Because otherwise, siege battles will just go on forever, and it would be miserable to watch. It wouldn't be that fun. Now, if you're doing like casual siege battles, if you're trying to make it a competitive, like fun format, like you need a timer. But if you're just doing it for fun, like, yeah, whatever. Like, who cares? But it really depends. How do you think the Herald Lords compare to each other? Um, okay, Nurgle Herald is really good. Slanesh Herald is, like, they're all good. All, the, Yeah, like, all the Herald characters are really, really strong. Kugath is the ultimate meme, for sure. All right, guys. So the Corn Army is quite thick. It's going to be Shielded Warriors and Dual Weapon Warriors. Double Bloodthirster, Furies, Spawn, and I think that's it. It's a very elite Corn Army. And that's how Grun likes to play. He likes to use this elite force, man. And for Grand Cathay, how are they going to defend the city? We do have the Jade Lancers. Uh, we have a bunch of crossbows, Iron Hill Gunners, super awesome, Astromancer, and a Dragon-Blooded Lord of Yin. Ooh, I like it. The one thing this army's really not going to like is the Bloodthirsters. Those things are going to be really, really tough to kill. But aside from that, I think this army's got some good stopping power. It's got some really, really solid stopping power there. Uh, the days of one-hour sieges in Medieval 2. Yeah, it was fun. I, I, I actually really like siege battles in uh, Shogun as well. Shogun 2. Yeah, that was a blast. I remember having some really epic defenses when I was in, in the old college days. Nurgling should be able to combine. Yeah, Nurgling should be able to stack up and create a ladder. I agree. That would be super sweet. That would be really cool. Yeah, that would be that would be fun. So looking back here, we have the old Bloodthirster. In terms of anti-large, not a lot of large targets, but the thing about him is he's still big and armored, and Cathay does not like big armor. Iron Hail Gunners are one of the few tools that can shut them down effectively. Like, I guess saturated crossbow fire could also kill a Bloodthirster, because the basic ones only have 70 armor. So the previous battle was, I guess, technically won by Korn, because they defended, they defended the city, and they held Cathay out for 20 minutes. Uh, so yeah, that, that was won by Korn, but now Cathay has the opportunity to defend as well. If Cathay is able to repel Corn faster, then uh, Cathay will win. Yeah, they held the full 20 minutes. And honestly, guys, Corn was going to win that fight eventually anyways. Like, I think Cathay was out of steam and uh, the cannon towers were doing damage. The warriors and the herald were super jacked. So I, I don't know if, like, maybe if they could have broken those Corn warriors, but I think that Corn probably had that one on the fighting as well. Yeah, so that's, that's something to consider. So you could still win on defense and uh, and then take hours on offense. So you could still win on defense and then take hours. It depends. Yeah, you, you're just basically comparing your score to your, how your opponent did. So right now, Yumaiz is just chilling because Corn is still deploying its army. Oh my god, the dreaded ladder deployer. Not ladder, but campaign. You can tell this guy's a campaign bet. He's like literally just deploying in one corner to avoid towers. I love it. Is he just going to beeline for the back of the city? That would actually be really cool. That would actually be really, really cool for sure if you just like went straight back here. Oh my god. That would be awesome, bro. Okay, looks like there's some... Is he like doing a dual prong? Okay, looks like he might be pushing from two sides. Just taking the two long alleys to the back of the city. Alright, that's kind of interesting. So he attacks here, he just goes like down the street and does the same thing, and then Cathay is like, has to figure out how they wanted to do it. Could the dreaded crane gunners deal with the bloodthirster? Uh, they're okay against it, yeah. You could have a... I, I wouldn't be against having a single crane gunner. It's kind of hard to defend them against, like, Furies and things like that. Yeah. Tiebreaker, there's a condition of both defend... Yeah, there is. There's a condition of... They just showed the rules and explained that. We did. You can head on over to the website, totaltavern.com, which is linked in the description of the stream. And uh, you can go to the tournament, which is happening right now. It's on the front page. You'll see it. It has, like, a siege... It says Siege Battle Tournament. And you can read all the rules there as well. Yeah, corn. Corn is looking to do take the long avenues here. I think they're just going straight for the back of the city, just like brute forcing it. Cathay will probably, in response, like set up cannons like down the streets here. I think there's like a cannon position like right here or something, or one of these spots. I can't quite remember. Definitely set up a cannon in the back as well. But we haven't seen Yumai start to deploy yet, so that's clearly a sign that he's uh, he's not ready yet. The corn player is still doing his thing. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll take a look, obviously, at 
you know, you might as well probably look back at everything. And if we find any issues with the rules for this, we'll fine tune it. Because I think siege tournaments are actually really fun. It's a it's a whole different thing and adds a pretty epic element. Like I actually have, I'm actually kind of interested to try it myself. All right, so corn is done. So corn's deployment is all set. Here we have the cornate army. It's going to be spawn warriors, bloodthirster, a couple furies here. And on the other side of the city, he's going to have like, he's basically half and half. Each side has a big chungus bloodthirster. Uh, one, of course, being exalted and a couple warriors in spawn. And they're just going to be pushing down the streets here. Just like straight up going down these avenues. And uh, yeah, not, I don't think they're going to bother with anything in the front of the city. Okay, never mind. There are some warriors here. So Yamais is going to match that with the Peasant Long Spearman, which will turn on the tower, which I think is what he wants to try and get that damage. Uh, the scorecard, yeah, it's, it's kind of like tricky. I could update it, I guess. I was just going to leave it and then update it after the series. But yeah, we'll just do it for now so you guys can see. So Korn did defend, and now Cathay is on the defense. Jade Warriors manning the walls, crossbows behind them, Jade Lancers in reserve to try and clear out Furies. And looking back, is there going to be anything in the Deep City? No, he's still just deploying his stuff all over the place. He'll probably just do one side at a time, but you want to make sure you leave some stuff back here too, in like Deep Reserves. Making my way downtown. You guys remember that song? Yeah. I don't know if CA would be thrilled to see how unworth defending the walls themselves. Uh, you know what? That's not the case, though. Not in every matchup. Some factions don't care to defend the walls. Like, Korn isn't going to be that great at it, but... Their army is too elite. But, honestly, in a lot of siege battles we've seen, I have seen wall defenses. Like, here we do have Jade Warriors, um, you know, defending here. Up in the walls. Because the Piercing Towers do a shit ton of damage. So, I think for armies that have, like, cheap chaff units, like Jades and Peasant Spears, I think defending the walls is a really good idea. But I think for more elite armies, it might not be the best idea, especially against a flying opponent who can, like, goon you in your different locations. Yeah, which is great. Which is great. A wild ambush battle tournament appears? Oh, man, dude, that's, like, some next-level stuff. That's some next-level stuff. The dreaded Bloodthirster cackles up in the sky. Pretty cool-looking model. The Exalted one is definitely way cooler, though. I mean, this guy's pretty rad, for sure. Like, the Exalted guy, he, he definitely is uh, looking pretty awesome. So, the deployments look more or less done. We have some uh, Jades. I like this. And we've seen this earlier from Yumais. He really likes to rush out and, like, sally forth and try and harass his opponent outside the walls. And, yeah, there are b benefits for defending. So, if you guys don't know this, when you are defending the city, the units, it doesn't show it yet. But if you have the Victory Plaza here in the back, it actually gives you 15% melee defense to your army. Or no, it's from this one. Yeah, see here. 15% melee defense and 10% leadership for your whole army, which is pretty incredible. And for the attacker, they don't have any advantages, obviously, except the extra money. But they can uh, they can you know grab victory locations, which gives them the momentum buff. So there is a little bit of play to be had there. But yeah, Cathay is going dual-pronged as well. Peasant archers, jade lancers defending both sides. We have vanguard deployment of peasant horsemen out here to try and you know push down the forces of corn, which is always good. And uh, yeah, man. The defender, of course, can see the army and see the deployment of their opponent. How it works in our tournament is the individual who is deploying as the attacker has to deploy their entire army, then let their opponent know they're done via chat, which we don't have in game, so we have to use Discord and uh, go from there. Yeah, which is going to be good. Why not crossbows on the walls with melee for harmony? So the thing is, the peasant archers can shoot up and over the wall as well. I think, I think he has... The infantry manning the towers. I understand your argument of having crossbows up here, but against a faction with Furies, uh, they would probably just kill the crossbows. Whereas now, the Jade Warriors will keep the cannons firing, and the Chaos Furies will not be able to stop them from doing that. Whereas if it were like crossbows or peasant archers, they would probably get karate chops. A raid stance tournament? <laughs> what is that even, dude? What is that even? Oh, that's funny, dude. Yeah, it looks like, like both players are deployed. I think there's one spear being left back here. Maybe just leave it. Nope, looks like it all it's all hands on deck. So he's going to be defending both of the avenues. And he's got a fair amount of cap. So he can always push back and, and do some work and, you know, fall back if he needs to with his, his speedy units and try and defend some of the choke points. So, uh, Spill, we actually did see a Sally strategy earlier where basically the Ogres rushed out of the city and won the fight against Zinch. It was really funny, dude. It was really, really funny. But the walls will be attempted... Corn probably will be able to push them off. Like, Furies plus a Bloodthirster will probably kill these Jade Warriors off the walls, but if they can still get the Tower Shots, then I think the Tower Shots uh, are very, very worth it. The Piercing Towers hit, like, trucks 
They are amazing. Both players doing the finishing touches on their deployments, or at least uh, I think Cathay is. The Cathay army is quite big. It has 2,300 against the 800 of Korn. Korn is typically a very elite army. They're, they're very elite. So the battle is underway, and the Kornate forces on both sides are going to be advancing in from the mighty Grun as he prepares to attack Yumayus here. Crossbows and Piercing Tower shooting out, and uh, looks like a little bit of side strafing coming in from Korn. But the Piercing Tower is probably the best target is going to be Spawn. Spawn are uh, very vulnerable to such shooting. So just shooting at the Spawn, whatever you can, that's going to that's gonna feel pretty good. So here comes the shots. Let's see what kind of damage we get. Not too much initially. Looks like only a couple of those shots hit. But again, even if it is just like poking damage, it does add up over time. And the Exalted Bloodthirster has got to be careful. Oh, it looks like we have a fight over here. Yeah. So the Peasant Horseman attacking these Chaos Warriors here, which is really interesting. I think he's just trying to keep them out of the city. Keep them from advancing and buy time for the Fort Towers here to shoot them. I don't know why else you would do that. Because, you know, if you just stay in combat, that's just giving Korn, like, free value there, right? So Korn is just going straight for the Gatehouse. Just balls deep for the Gatehouse. Tower shooting here. Getting some okay damage. Nothing crazy. And the Bloodthirster is sitting overhead looking to get a Breath Attack. Nice one by Grun. Beautiful. Gets a Breath Attack and probably is going to be jumping in there. Yeah, because, like... Probably the two crossbows turn and shoot. If the Fury shut down the crossbows, I think that Exalted Bloodthirster is doing great. Now, on the other side, we see Korn attacking in. Really nice play here by Yumais. He used the Ancestral Warriors, uh, which are a Halberd unit, a summon outside the city to attack the spawn. And he's also using his Lancers to attack the Korn army. And the reason why he does this is just to buy time for his towers and different things like that. And they're definitely doing good. Yeah, it's a nice little defense here by Grand Cathay. Here we do see Cathay sending in Peasant Horsemen to their doom. But... On that same note, you know, the Corn Warriors are also getting shot to pieces by the tower. So it could end up being worth it in the end. Currently, Grun is up on value, but it's not taking into account the value that Cathay is getting from its towers, which is probably pretty considerable. Classic Cathay getting attacked here by the old Furies. So the Furies attack in and are able to nibble on the Jade Lancers, but the Jade Lancers should be able to repel them over time. But the gates have been broken and Corn is in. So Spawn have moved in. And it looks like they're being given an attack order to try and move through these Jade Warriors who are valiantly trying to hold the gate here. But I don't see it working out too well. Corn has got some good mass, and they're just getting bullied back, man, as the tides of hell pour in. And this is already looking kind of rough for Cathay. Like, this hold here, I think we needed some halberds there, because the halberds could have held back the spawn quite a bit better. And Cathay is already running with all of its missiles, which is definitely not a good sign. A couple peasant spears might be able to move in. Jade warriors will hold for a time, but overall, I think Corn has probably done very well on this side of the city. Now, over here, taking a look, we can see that Corn has also gotten through this gatehouse, but this side is going much better for Cathay. The Corn army is very blobbed up outside. It's looking very, very ugly. And uh, there is going to be a nice bombardment here, potentially. That's going to be the Talon's Grasper, the, the Dragon's Bell, the blue one that Meowing has. And yeah, pretty good. Hits those Corn Warriors pretty square. We'll do quite a bit of HP damage. And now Corn is going to be moving into the city while the Cathay defenders meet them at the gates. And the Peasant Spears and Crossbows getting some nice shots as the Furies up in the sky are getting melted by the Iron Hill Gunners. But Furies will kill them super quickly. Although that's what the Jade Lancers are here for, Yumais. And the Jade Lancers should collapse on them right now. Although, again, there's lots of micro, so it's probably a little bit more challenging. Now, back to this side of the city. As we zoom across, it looks like Cathay is holding well right here. They have the Spears and the Jade Warriors, and the Corn Army is doing pretty darn good. Cult of Summons are really going to push him back, and the Exalted Bloodthirster has been a nightmare this entire time. He's just been running around, doing as he pleases, and really giving the business to these defenders. Big breath attack right there. Here comes the whip. Down goes the Peasant Archers. The one thing that can kill him is, is definitely uh, definitely not paying the price. So we do have some momentum. I think did one of these objectives captured? No, I think this one is potentially being threatened. No, that's weird. I don't know why the momentum thing is even appearing there. It's a very, very weird bug. But Cathay finally does shut down the Furies, which is going to be a huge win for them for sure. And obviously Korn is taking some big, big damage. Uh, I don't know where the Bloodthirster is. The Bloodthirster was here earlier and spawned fighting Jade Lancers on the outside of the city. So the Jade Lancers are uh, at least occupying a formidable amount of these units. Cathay might be considering going for like the time victory, but Corn is very fast if they do get through. Although Corn Warriors only have 28 speed, so in all honesty, they're just not super, super quick. And here comes some sort of funny business. Looks like it's going to be the Summon of Halberds. Yeah, so we get the Ancestral Warriors coming out to hold the gates. The natural mortal followers of Cathay fall. The Ancestors are called upon to defend the gates, and here they will fight against the Spawn of Corn. See what kind of value they can get. Oh, the big sword! Oh my god, that did like 80% damage to those Jade Warriors, man. Might have been... Mm, yeah, that was a good spot. That's going to break the infantry for sure. And Corn is still trying to get into the city. They're, they're doing their best. But look at these Corn Warriors, man. They got beat up bad by those towers. 
Looking around, any other funny business? Looks like we have a little bit of a, a small engagement here. So the Chaos Warriors of Corn will probably get through these spears eventually. It's going to take some time, though. And Corn is really just going balls deep on this side of the city, though. Like, this Cathay defense over here was an absolute disaster. For sure. Like, I think Corn just crumped him pretty good. I mean, there's a couple infantry left. But what Grun needs to do now is move to the back of the city. He needs to just, like, start hustling over here with all of his troops. He's got plenty of time. He's only been attacking for five minutes. And, uh, and yeah, like, he's he's got plenty of... Plenty of Time to get to the back of the city. Looking around for other small engagements, we do have the Chaos Warriors. Eventually, we'll defeat these peasants, most likely. And back here, we have the Spearmen. Probably will move down from the walls to try and defend. You can see they're moving over here. I would imagine they're going to be going down from the walls. Look at the Peasant Horsemen. The Haggard Sacrifice. Oh, did those gates... Oh, no. Did he just open the gates for the Corn Troops? Oh, I think he accidentally opened the gates and the Corn Warriors move in. Oh, that's unfortunate. So the Peasant Horsemen, I think, got too close and it triggered the gates to open. Or maybe he gave them a move to go through... And now the Corn Warriors just get in. They're like stoked. They're like, hell yeah, man, this is great. So the Corn Warriors will move into the city there. I don't know if that'll end up being a big factor, but it could. So huge AoE going down right here. Huge AoE going down from Yumai. So he's able to punish the Cornate Warriors. And uh, honestly, this position looks like it's going to be a Cathay hold. I mean, they have the Iron Hill Gunners. They have some big towers from downtown. They're shooting pretty effectively here. And, uh, and yeah, the Jade's doing good, man. I really don't know where that other Bloodthirster went. Like, I have no idea. I feel like he's been MIA this whole time. Oh, he teamed up with his buddy. There he is. Okay. So Bloodthirster. Exalted Bloodthirster moving to the back of the city. Probably going to be trying to clear off these units. There is a Cathay Tower coming up. It looks like, yep, it's going to be up now. But the Bloodthirsters can actually attack the towers there. So they can go and kill that if they want to. And Corn is currently making their way down the street. So here they come. Hustling down. And uh, yes, there, mu there must have been some cultists living in the city to let them in. The, tra the traitor horsemen. Yeah, this, this would suck pretty bad. Imagine being like... Just having these like seven foot tall giant like corn warriors with two axes chasing you and you're just like you're just like this guy, you know? This is this is you. Yes, yeah, so they're getting hunted pretty hard. And uh, I would imagine corn will get to the back of the city with these units. The other corn army though is definitely looking pretty beat up. It still is going, and Cathay is gonna be pulling back some Jade Lancers to try and defend the back of the city. I would imagine the Dragon Blooded Lord is probably gonna start heading back as well. And Iron Hill Gunners are getting some nice shots up the street here. So whatever corn units get through, they are getting blasted by the Iron Hill Gunners, which and these are quite good units. Uh they're very, very underrated. It's just hard to protect them in a lot of the contemporary multiplayer matchups as they still shoot. And the cultists still driving in. Ah, uh, you know what? Cathay is looking actually quite bare here also, but I guess there's just spawn left. Yeah, Cathay for sure wins this engagement on this side. For sure. The Warriors, I think, did get in. I'm not sure. They might have gotten routed off by these peasant long spearmen, which is pretty funny. Oh, no. They're actually running for the capture point. Okay. So those chaos warriors actually kind of snuck around and are going to be trying to grab that supply location. No momentum buffs yet. I do not believe. I don't think anything's been taken by corn. Or by, uh, yeah, by corn. I don't think so. This is the big stressful situation, though. Like, this big erect corn force moving down the streets here is going to be a problem. Oh, look at this. This is really cool, huh? So look at this. You might set up a, a barricade platform here and the archers are just shooting at the corn units that are running by. That's actually a pretty cool cinematic there. See if you can like zoom down there and see it. Yeah, so the corn warriors, I don't think it, it's a distraction at the very least. Like the corn warriors do not want to attack this, in my opinion. I think uh, I think going for the back of the city is stronger. Although, although we do have a key building here. So maybe these dual weapon warriors are going to break down this barricade and massacre those archers and then go for the key building. Whereas the spawn and the cultists are going to go for the back. In the meantime, Cathay did have some defenders back here. And though they are spears, the Bloodthirster still, you know, costs like literally five times as much as them. And uh, he's able to give them the dirty. So those peasants who are going to be running for the hills certainly will not be enjoying that. So, the back of the city, certainly in some danger. You know, if uh, if Korn wins here on the attack, then they just straight up win the tournament. Because they did win the defense. Cathay needs to hold here. They need to hold. And now there's some Jade Warriors running to the back of the city, a Dragon-Blooded Lord. And the last of the Corn spawn have been last samurai by those Iron Hill Gunners. A couple Chaos Warriors of Corn still at the gates, and also some rallying units here. So Grun could be bring these guys back and use them as objective cappers in the city. So they could just go and capture like all these random objectives, because Cathay is eventually going to have to abandon those, right? They're going to have to get to the back of the city, because the, the front on the southwest has fallen. The, the Brave Defenders met their uh, end at the Axes of Corn. As these Jade Lancers attempt to fight, looks like there's going to be an Astromancer bombardment going down. Should do some decent work. And there it goes. Nice little lightning zap. And boom. That actually did a bunch of damage. That was really, really good. So the barricade situation. Yep, barricade was compromised. Bloodthirsters coming. And the Chaos Warriors of Corn are going to be moving on over to the key building here. We'll see what kind of work they can get done. 
Cathay's defenders, it pretty much comprises of a bunch of running peasant archers and this guy who's wearing a very very fun headdress there, but I don't think it's going to be saving him from the from the old uh, from the old bloodthirster. The big man, dude. Oh, he's so cool. Bloodthirsters are one of the coolest models in the game, dude. Yeah, they're really, really rad. So, Cathay has some towers. Do they have any towers in the back? I don't think so. Yeah, let's see. No, no towers. They, I think they can build one up there, but I don't think they are. And it looks like Korn is going to get the back of the city. Cathay is running. So he's actually reacting to this well. I mean, he's pulling back his units. He's going to be able to fight for that. But the value is probably much closer. Let's see. So it's about 9,000. Cathay's overall army is what? 12.4 or something? Or 12.6? So Korn, you know, has a bit left. They've taken a lot of damage from towers as well, though, which isn't included in the score. So unfortunately, this metric isn't really useful at all for us. Yeah, not really altered at all. Here we get some shots going down from the towers, trying to blast that Bloodthirster, but he just kind of takes off back up in the sky. A couple peasant archers. Like, this is very much going to be like a tooth and nail fight. Like, every ounce of ammunition from Umais is going to have to be used here against these Cornate Warriors, because they're they're slow, but they're determined. They're eventually going to get to those objectives, and I don't really know if Cathay's going to have the tools. My concern for Cathay is, like, this is their, their fighting power, right? They have this, like, haggard lord here. Just, just getting uh, dunked on here by this Bloodthirster. Dragon-Blooded Lords aren't like slouches of fighters, but against like a greater demon of corn, I mean, come on, that's not really fair. So the demon definitely getting the work in, putting that character down, and it's looking like corn is probably going to be claiming victory. I mean, the back objective is going to be taken by the spawn, the other victory location is being taken, Cathay is very, very bare on resources. I think that the other side of the city really got punished super hard, right? Like, this is this whole side was just a steamroll for corn, and Cathay, I think, really felt that. But... Cathay does have nine minutes left. Korn's going to be capturing this objective. They almost have the grand victory plaza in the back. This one is going to be taken by Korn relatively quickly because of the weight of infantry on it. I believe there's some Cathay towers shooting around. Yeah, there's some like kind of dropping some shots. This little piercing tower right here, which is doing cute damage. Cathay does have its peasant archers. A valiant hold in the city, but Grun is now up on value as the Cathay Lord is just getting absolutely karate chops. And the Jade Warriors and the Jade Lancers trying to get to the back of the city to, to liberate this objective. Potentially going to do some damage against the spawn. Yeah, some of the spawn actually do fall to that charge. It looks like two or three of them might have actually died there. But Chaos Warriors with dual weapons moving up. And guys, it is looking like the Corn Dogs probably going to get this one. Cathay does have the Iron Hill Gunners moving and some Jades. But yeah, and so there's towers shooting all across the city as well. But victory tickets is a thing for sure. The towers will accrue decent value over time, but they're not the most accurate thing in the world. Here, a nice play. The peasant archer is getting some uh, good firepower here into the spawn, who do have 800 HP left and, what, 30 peasant archers here? So they go from 800 with the piercing tower assisting down to sub-700. Not quite, man. Those peasant archers are really sad. Very, very low models. Now in the back, we do get a big AoE coming down from Grand Cathay. Very nice. Does potentially push those corn warriors off the objective, and now Cathay is going to try and recapture it. Corn does have it, though. So corn is now getting the victory tickets. I believe they own both of the major plazas here in the city. The Dragon-Blooded Lord is going to be retreating off while the Jade Warriors waddle in. Let's see what kind of work they can do. The big Terminator, the Bloodthirster, getting his axe going. He's got an axe to grind as the last of the Jade Warriors in the city are crumbled. Guys, I think Korn just straight up wins. It's not going to be based on time. Korn has claimed skulls. And they will most likely emerge victorious here. GG, well played. That was uh, too much armor. That's the classic Cathay problem. I like... Uh, dealing with these big bloodthirsters. Maybe like a long was with Lord Metal, like Plague of Rust could have been okay. It's still very, very tough in my experience. Storm of Shadows going down, going to be slowing down the Greater Demon, but Korn does have both capture points. And uh, yeah, now the Lord's going to just get absolutely destroyed. Look at this. Oh man, that is a, that is not a fun one for that Cathay Lord. The Beheading Swing, 167 HP. Let's see if we can get, I wonder if there's going to be a magical sync animation. Probably not. But the Demon will follow its prey and it will make sure to finish it as it flies up in the sky. It descends from the hell above, and victory for the Blood God. GG, well played. GG, well played. They don't get tickets if the point is being contested. Makes sense. So yeah, it was a cool. It was a cool split defense from Cathay. I think. Uh, I think in the end, it didn't work out. You know, one of the sides just got overwhelmed so heavily that the other side barely won. So I think Corn just had like more advantageous fights on both sides. Yeah, that was really fun. So with that being the case. That is going to be a 2-0 victory for Grun in the Grand Finals. He will be advancing. Oh, we, we forgot to do this. Look at that. Okay, now it's official. And Grun will be advancing on to win today's uh, cash prize, which is being put up by Yimais. So GG, well played. GG, well played indeed. 
All righty. So let me take a look here. Make sure everything went through with the players and there's no issues. That was pretty fun. That was very fun, guys. Corn had 888 warriors. Oh, they did. The most corn number for its army. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that was. I wonder if that was in intended. That was super fun, man. That was that was a good old scrap. GG, well played. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the tournament. Now there's going to be a couple more games here at the end, which I'm just going to play on my own. So if you guys want to face me in a siege battle, turn siege. It's the name of the game. And the password is just there's going to be one two three. So I want to try a couple as as the old boy Nurgle. All right. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was definitely quite a bit of fun, guys. GG, well played. To Grun59. It is not just Grun, but it is also Grun59 who has claimed victory this day. Well played to FPOD and uh, HeyJ as well. Quite solid performance across the board. And now we can switch here and just get rid of these scorecards. So if you guys like the format, do drop a like. It's, it's pretty much the best metric I have for gauging what content you guys want to see. Um, cool. And outstanding. Yeah, the corn army had 888, which is pretty impressive. Um, all right, so Altorf, yeah, Altorf probably wouldn't be the... What is another one we didn't see on stream today that we can do? So I'm probably going to do like one or two siege battles to end this. I'll be the defender with Nurgle first. Oh my god, there's some wild children next door just having a pool party. Um... We will do the Dragon Fang mount. Dragon Fang mount. Oh, it's a Lizardman map. That's pretty cool. All right, so we got Rhineless here. So I'm going to go uh, Nurgle for the defense. Uh, one sec here. Siege battle. How come I cannot switch what I'm playing? <laughs> That's the password on your suitcase? Yeah, it's, it's the classic password. All right. Oh, there we go. I was like, my brain is just not working. Okay, so I'm the defender as Nurgle. Rhineless, what are you gonna play? You're gonna play Corn. Pick Null, and it's a great map. We'll do a couple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Uh, did the map not switch? Null. Let me see what Null looks like. I want it to be like a good one though. Cause like, if it's really unfair. Oh no no, Null Null is the one with that huge alley in the back. So we're gonna do this one. Cool. Okay, looks like he's gonna go corn, so I'll just go Nurgle. All right. So time for the Wookie Claw. Huh, how do we want to defend this? This feels like a tricky one. I mean, of course the Mortis engines are always nice. Uh, oh, that's right, we have to set the uh, custom funds. So custom funds, uh, 8, 18,000. So you get a bigger army, uh, large armies, unit caps off, and time limit is going to be 20 minutes. All right. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to like try out some schemes here. Thanks, guys, for joining, by the way. 2v2 might lag a little bit, but yeah, like... Oh, by the way, on the website, we're setting up the tools for, um, for 2v2 tournaments as well. So that's going to be something that's coming up soon as well. Very, very excited for that. Okay, that looks good to me. And then here, so we got Corn as the attacker. Next, next game I'll do, uh, I'll do like a Cathay or Kislev or something like that. I am defending. Nurgle, Nurgle's doing what he's best at, which is just being chunky and sitting on objectives. Um, Air Force, maybe, maybe a little bit of Air Force action. Nuln is a super large map. I recommend you use the ones from the tourney. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will. Okay, so we get you guys. Do we want a Toad Rider? I feel like that's not very good. Forsaken, I don't know. Like Plague Bears seem like more fun, actually. Plague Bears definitely seem pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Okay, so dealing with SEMs, I guess we have tools for that. Not like the best ones in the world, but it'll, it'll do. Oh yeah, I got to take spells off my Nurgle caster. I was like, oh, there's so much, so much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? All right. 2v2 Siege Tournament. Yeah, we can totally do it. Uh, then that's going to be on the next development cycle for the website. It's going to be um, setting up uh, 2v2 and also Swiss League format. So we're going to be having the options to do all those on site, which is going to be cool. So basically, if you're playing in a 2v2 tournament, it's way easier than challenge. You just create a team on the site. 
and then go from there. Um, hmm. That actually seems like a fun option. I don't know how good it is, but we're going to try it. All right. Good luck. Have fun to my opponent. GLHF. The, the Nurgle Chad pick. Yeah, of course. I didn't bring Sentinels because I didn't have much money. Yeah, I know. Money's tight. When you're the defender, you have like enough for like a normal army and your opponent has like 18,000 or something. So, yeah. I don't know which Nurgle Towers are the best. I kind of forget. I think the 900 one is pretty good. So, um, Rhineless, here's what you do, man. You message me in Discord when you're when you're ready, when you've deployed your army, because I know you're in the Discord, so. Nurgle's, Nurgle's coming for it. Yeah, man, I can't wait to get the old world back. Just give it to us, Precious. Give us the old world, Precious. God, I hope it's not that far off. If we have to wait till like summer to get the old world factions back in, I don't know, man. That's going to be really bad. Yeah, Nuln is a very good, cool looking map, but it's not good for a 20 minute game, correct? It has that huge alley in the back and it's just like, yeah, it would take forever to get there. It'd be very, very slow. Okay, let's get rid of the blocker. Thank you, Wookie. So now um, my opponent deploys. So here's my army. I have a great Chungus. I have double cultists to push off blood th uh, bloodthirsters and whatnot. Um, I got some Nurglings, some Plague Bearers just to hold. And then I also have like a bit of a goon squad. So I have one death's head drone just to like try and take out high value targets. But ooh, oh, oh, he's got so much air. I assumed he wouldn't go that hard in the paint in the air, but he did. Oh God. Well, at least I can land my flyers now. It's, it's not like Warhammer 2 where they would just be dead now. So it's not the end of the world. So yeah, he deploys. And then when he's all done, I will deploy. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? All right, so let's let's start taking a look at towers here. Uh, where's my main victory plaza? So that's back here. Ooh, ooh. Oh, double tower in the back. Big boy Nurgle might just need to chill back here. This is a pretty sweet spot, if you ask me. Oh my god, is there four towers? You can have four towers back here? Where are these ones? Oh my god, talk about like the best defensive point ever. Wow. So I think defending these two points is going to be the way. Like I will man the walls. Can play? Wait, can plague bearers go on walls? Okay, they can. Yeah, so I probably will do that. I'll put like some plague bearers on the walls to do a little bit of shooting. Hey, you left the wheel of doom up. What wheel of doom? There's no wheel of doom. This map is really cool though, man. It just makes me want the old world factions even more. So bad. Okay, it looks like they're chilling over here. So I'm going to do like a partial defense of the wall, I think, and then. And then I'll probably just Helm's Deep and back here. Because, like, you know, this is just too prime time. Like, setting up, like, towers here. Um, I don't know which Nurgle towers are the best, though. These are Magic Towers. And this is Magic Tower. Yeah, okay. And then Magic Tower. And this is, like, an Explosive Tower. Yeah, which towers are the really good ones? For those of you guys who are campaign players, let me know. Because I honestly don't know. I haven't really messed around with them too much. The old ones knew how to build things. Yeah, apparently so. The old ones, actually, yeah, they put towers in the right spots. Uh, let me minimize and see. Let me know when you are ready. All right, so I just messaged my opponent here. And we'll find out. Okay, he says, he says he's ready. All right, so now I can deploy. All right, so uh, we have like a corn vanguard force over here. Which is what? A couple Halberd boys? Okay, so we just throw like one Plague Bear over there. Anything that I, I put here. And then this army. Can they like get both towers here? Great. So that's probably worth, I think. Aside from that though, we're mainly going to be chilling. And taking like a much more defensive posture. Okay, I got to like orient myself to the city. Um, we could set up a defensive tower here, but it's tied to that low ground location, which probably isn't safe. Um, Nurgle towers here. Definitely want to get like a tier one tower somewhere if we can. So this one, I don't know about its line of sight. So we'll probably set up a tier one tower here. Unless there's another location. So let's see. What are the options that we have? Just that one. Okay. So we're going to set up you. And then we're going to set up one back here, too. For now. And just get those ones. Like so. Okay, so Nurglings will be chilling. 
Uh, we're also going to get attacked from this side, so... Probably want to get, like, a single Exalted Plague Bearer. I kind of wanted to save the Exalted Boys for, like, defending the back of the city. So we're just going to do it like this. Our Haggard Air Force is just going to get dunked on. There's, like, literally no way to save it. Man, I shouldn't have gone so hard in air. Uh, it's easy to say after the fact, right? All right, so Nurglings, you guys are chilling. You guys are chilling here. We need to, like, really drag him through the mud. Uh-huh. And uh, the Exalted Plague Boys can just be camping out in the back. Although, yeah. Because the thing is, they're tough enough to take, like, a gooning from most of his army. So I think we're okay. Yeah, the tournament's over for now, guys. For anybody just showing up. Yeah, there's not too many great targets over here, to be honest. Shoot whatever you can. Like, I feel, I feel like Plague Bears will grind pretty cost-effectively against most targets. Oh, I didn't even notice there was something over there. Shit. What is this? Oh, a couple. Oh, they were hiding in the trees. Okay. Fair play. Here, yep, we're getting some damage on the halberds. And let's take our little goon squad over here and go see what we can do, actually. The Air Force is coming. The Bloodthirster is here, which I'm okay with. Plague Bears, like, the amount of damage we get from the two towers hopefully will be worth. Now we're moving this way. So Big Chungus is here. He's chilling in the back. We got towers up. Uh, how are we looking here? Go forth, my minions. And it's going to take a while to kill these Plague Bears. Yeah, if they can, like, do some damage against these Furies and stuff, that's cool. Because it's also distracting them here and allowing me to potentially get a good gooning here. But aside from that, most armies going to chill back here. Really only gotten 26 value? I assume these Plague Bears would do better here. Well, guess not. Oh, that's right. It doesn't take into account my tower value. That's, that's, that's always the classic, isn't it? All right. So let's get the Death's Head grenades. You guys circle behind here. Two Furies. And his Air Force is... Yeah, man. Those Plague Bears died fast. Okay, that was a mistake. I learned from that. I'll learn that for next time. All right. So let's drop some blows here. We could bring the, the character Goon Squad down here. It's going to take him too long to get there, I think. It's going to take way too long. Uh, we could attack the Halberds. We'll use our ammo first. I think the big demon's on its way over here. Yeah, it is. So, hmm, these Plague Bearers might just want to get down from the walls. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of work in. We could attack these Halberds in the back and try and do some work. So let's, let's do this. No, this is too risky. This is too risky. Let's fly back. Screw it. The Death's Head guys at least got to do some grenade damage. So one Plague Bear is absolutely karate chopped. Uh, we can start on another tower back here. And just start setting all this up. Set up the barricade, which I think is 500. Alright, so let's hustle it up. Because at least if we get our flyers back... How quick are these? Ooh, we're actually a little bit slower. Hmm. The Great Unclean one can drop some fat heals to help out. But that is a mean old Air Force, guys. Come on, flies. Plague bears are down. Let's see if they can bump and grind here. Okay, the Bloodthirster actually turned and ran. So what we could do now is we can turn and fight while we have the support here, and we can use the uh, Fleshy Abundance. All right, Plague Bearers holding the gate, exactly what you want. We are buying time, too. And the big Air Force fight is underway. We have heals if we need to. Leave your friends behind. We're actually winning this Air Force fight pretty decisively because the Bloodthirster wasn't there. Uh, let's use the Spreading Plague thing to lower their melee defense. Nice, that's going to be super good. Unfortunately, there are dudes coming from the other side, which we don't really have too many great tools to deal with them. The towers in the back are chilling. The Air Force fight is good. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this, like, right here on the Plague Drones. That's a big overcasted heal, which I think is going to be worth. Yeah, where are they coming? Okay, so they're going to come this way, so let's get a blocker. All right, so, yeah, we just took out the Fury Air Force, which is sweet. And we got the big heal. So now we need Big Chungus to waddle over this way. Wherever those guys go, we'll have to intercept them. Uh, more Coronate Force is coming. I do have towers being built, so I'm managing my supply okay. But now we just run. We killed all the Furies, and we still have a decent Air Force after all is said and done there. So that was a super good trade for us. We could use Curse of the Slug. I think saving up for Rock Glory Srot's a little bit better. So let's keep these guys together. Yeah, now we got our tower shooting. I think they're just basic piercing towers, though, from the look of things. Uh, all right, so let's get another tower here. All righty, so let's go ahead and land these guys. Army's looking pretty small. I think we just fall back here. All right, so let's get the little Nurglings hustling, get the Nurglings hustling. 
Oh my god, is he actually landing? I'm down. I'm super down to party here. Let's use fecundity. Pull these guys around, get a little... Not fecundity, but the slow so they can't cycle charge me and then just run past them. Yeah, nice, nice. I think we might have gotten this around there. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that was that was a huge play. Let's go here, and then these guys can just keep attacking. Cultists of Corner on the way. Let's throw the little death's head at him in the meantime. Cool, pulling you back. All right, team, let's retreat back this way. Yeah, that was some good damage, man. That was some good damage for sure. Okay, we baited out a summon. I mean, unintentionally, of course, but it, it happens. So he, one of the corn summons has been used, so we're just going to pull back a little bit. These are exalted boys, I think. Yeah, let's get a blocker here. Force them into, like, the chokes. All right. We have our exalted plague bearers waiting up there. These little death's head drones can keep just flying around. Because it's a time it's a time thing too, right? If he just wants to chase my flies, and I think it's a I think it's a win for us. Come on, team. Let's go. Hustle up nerglings. Waddle back here. We can't like defending this is kind of silly, I think. Cause all of our investments are like up here mostly. Yeah, because we we'll, we'll hold the main victory plaza. We can actually like partially defend it. Okay, we actually have an option here. These are oh, this is a summon unit, that's right. That's why that's why I, that one was being overextended. All right, so I think our towers are shooting here. Yeah, they should be shooting. So this is this means it's like an okay position to fight. So we can like work up the street and fight in a blob. Uh, Corn has other things coming, like what blood letters here. So let's move you guys over and see if we can get any freebies. And the exalted plague bears can be like our helm's deep unit because we have to kind of like fight this. Yeah, look at the towers getting the work in. Nice. Light Swarm, Mortis Engines here, Cultists are on the way. Is this Cultist stuck? Okay, he, he looks like he's stuck. Okay, let's move him this way. That's unfortunate. Alright, let's go after these Blood Letters. We can get some magic going down the pipe. Not the best cast in the world, but not the worst either. One Cultist getting karate chopped. Let's go ahead and drop a summon here, just in case he dies quick. My other Cultist is, is actually stuck and broken. That's really shit. Well. At least we can be somewhat useful with them and get this going. You guys are here. We got some Nurglings in the, the final hold position. Let's go, big man. Let's go, big man. Let's go. Big overcasted heal. It's going to be nice. Yeah, this cultist is bugged out. He's stuck, but at least he's fighting something. And he got his summon off. So that's good. Pump those Nurgle legs, man. All day. Keep these Nurglings hustling. And then you guys go here. We used all of our death's head ammo. Really didn't do much. Oh, uh, let's pull the Death's Head boys back here. These other ones are still fighting pretty well here. We have Fecundity. Yeah, the, the Lord there is actually almost dead. Actually almost dead. Okay, the four towers are just going ham. Do we have the we have the fourth tower here? I don't know if we ever got one. You know what? Uh, we could save up for a bigger tower, actually. I think we have some time. Okay, Rot, Glorious Rot. Hmm, I don't know how good that'll be. Unfortunately, our, uh, our meat here is in a little bit of a bad situation. Let's pull in and get this guy. Like, I'm just going to use this. I know it doesn't do much damage against SEMs, but it seems like it might be worth just to try and finish him off. Get him, get him, get him. Okay, okay. Come on, flies. Hunt him down. Yeah, he's still taking a little bit from Rock Glorious Rot, which is good. Hey, my other cultist finally escaped his cage. Nice. All right, flies. Let's go. And we can use the slowing ability to kind of keep him keep him trapped here. These rot flies need to pull back too. My big chungus, there's no point in running. I might as well just turn and fight and get as much value as I can. That greater demon should straight up die though. He's got like a thousand HP. Oh, okay. We didn't get our last spell off. That's a shame. Okay, so the exalted boys finished that. The greater demon is still alive somehow. So let's pull you guys back like this. We need to target him if we can. Okay, let's target the Bloodthirster. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so he's targeted. Uh, you're targeted as well. Cultists, get back if you can. And now we just got to try and hold this position here. It's going to be tough. Um, yeah, just get a 900 cost tower there. Oh, man, if we could finish that guy, that'd be great. I don't think we're going to be able to. Poor Cultus here, still going like a champ. Is he actually being targeted by the tower? He is, I think. I think he's juking. Yeah, very nice. 
So we got some halberds working around. Let's get some nerglings to just like tarp at that avenue. Start throwing the little death head grenades and you guys can, yeah, okay, we hit him there. He's shaking. If the greater demon falls then we might have a chance. The other greater demon is here. And the rot flies, do we descend? Probably not, not with the halberds there. Yeah, see the halberds were on standby to give an attack order. Let's pop the army wide slow here. Force him in. Cultus is running. He's probably going to come back, which is good. And uh, the barri barricades are holding as well. So we got extra towers here. That lord is like 500 HP, man. He got hit there, but it didn't do any damage, really. Okay, kind of missed him. Okay, I think at this point, like, shooting into the blob of infantry is probably better. And, uh, yeah, look at these bloodletters go, man. Probably should have pulled Big, Ching Big Chungus back earlier. Yes, blast them, my pretties. Blast them. So tower's coming up in nine seconds. This one should have some line of sight down here, I think. Cultus has also come back. Uh, these are owned by Corn, so let's just go recapture this. I think that might be better. We do have the defender bonus, I think, but that's pretty much it. All right, so yeah, that, that big other bloodthirster is kind of running around scheming a little bit. Let's see if we can pop him here with these towers. Get lucky. Oh no, the Nurglings. They let him in. Hey, we hit him. We hit him with the tower. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Man, how is he still stable? He's at like 200. <laughs> it's like, like drifting through here. So we're going to go in guard mode and just shoot this guy down, see if we can finish him. Nurglings still holding like champs. Let's get these other Nurglings across, I guess. Pull the rot flies back. We can attack into these these blood letters here. The last point is here. The Helm's Deep of Nurgle. He's got 125 HP, dude. Holy shit. Can we finish that guy, please? How's it going over here? That little Nurglings are holding on well, man. This capture point's coming back to us. We can always use, like, try and recapture the middle, too. Unfortunately, oh no, don't army lost me. Come on, man. We still had a lot of towers. That was really fun though. That was that was a really really fun battle. Yeah, like that was that was definitely winnable too. Like if I had been less sloppy with my great unclean one. GG, well played, man. That was really fun. I don't know the army losses though. Yeah, it would have been hard. He had another bloodthirster that was super healthy, so I think he had it. Well played. So now we'll switch, and you can be the defender this time, and I will play something we didn't see today. We'll do Kislev as the attacker. That's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, and we can try, let's see what other maps we have. GG, well played, that was that was super fun. I like those battles. It's a lot of like fun tactics and cool schemes and things like that you could do. Okay, so what are the maps that we have in the pool? Uh, the Red Fortress. So uh, Rhineless, you can play whoever you want here, whoever you want. We will attack the Red Fortress of Chaos. Nur Nurgle did fine there, though. Like, Rhineless is a very good player. So I'm, I think Nurgle is totally fine. Oh, that's right. You guys wanted to see an, an attack as Nurgle. Okay. Yeah. The Plague Bears on the outside walls were kind of dumb. Yeah, the, the Air, Air Goon Squad really gave him the business. That elite Bloodthirster still at 21 HP, did he? Is it time for Red Olgor? Oh, no. Hold on. So you guys can vote for it. Um, Kis uh, Kislev or Nurgle. You guys can choose. Attacking as Nurgle is miserable. Well, you know, I'm a Nurgle, Nurgle player myself, so life is suffering. I'll stay as Corn. Okay, staying as Corn. Sounds good. Unclean one. Yeah, the unclean one was he, was... he was the great unclean one was really good. We had some moments that were really solid, but then I took too much damage in a couple of those fights, and we paid the iron price. Uh, okay, you guys just want me to suffer, huh? Just just pure suffering. Pure, unadulterated suffering. Kugath just isn't very good. I mean, I could do Kugath if you guys really want, but it's... Uh, he's just a giant toilet seat, man. Uh... Yeah, this is gonna be hard. It's gonna be very tough. So let's think of some options here. Try some fun builds out. And uh, Wookie, come and give us your, your mighty paw, my friend. One last time in the deep. 
Wow, I have so much money now. It's trippy. The Plague Bearers felt pretty bad. Corn's Air Force was definitely no joke. So we gotta we gotta put some respect on the Corn Air Force there. Okay, looks looks cool. Yeah, it's great. Could go for like great unclean ones. Could go double chunky boy. We have so much extra money, you know. I feel like swarming the city isn't a bad idea though. Swarming it from a couple angles. Kugath is just slow and crappy and just like, yeah, just terrible in general. Obviously, corn corn can sally forth and try and like flank us, so we have to be kind of careful. We did see that earlier in the tournament, right? Okay, let's take those off. Cool. The beasts of Nurgle. I don't hate the plague bears though. I feel like this army's pretty cool. I don't know how good it is, but should be fun nonetheless. All right, GLHF. Good luck and have fun. As we load in, we can take the Wookiee blocker so you guys can see the monstrosity of a build. I'm going double great unclean one. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be good, but it's gonna be sweet. I don't have healing because I went with death too, so it's really, really, really high risk. Hey, take care, particular play paint. Thanks again for the donation earlier. Yeah, Kugat sucks, unfortunately. Uh, so quick off topic, if we're getting squats in 40k, will we eventually get chaos? Eh, probably, probably not. I don't think so. I don't know, maybe like 10 years from now. It doesn't seem like it's like anywhere on their, their spectrum of interest. Yeah, the mode is really fun, for sure. It's a whole different game. Like picking, uh, playing Nurgle is definitely suffering. I think I would pick Nurgle as the defender. Like I liked defending with Nurgle. I felt like that was pretty good, but um, attacking with Nurgle feels really stressful. All right. So we just went with a pretty large meme army, for sure. I think we're just gonna consolidate our efforts on one side of the city. Probably just go like over here. Not try anything too silly. So Rhineless, uh, hopefully you can just listen to the stream, my friend, and I'll tell you when uh, when I'm all done. And if uh, I don't hear from you, I'll message you on Discord. So we got a huge Air Force, right? So let's just get them all in one big goon squad, like so. I don't want to like have my army too all over the place and then have corn like surge out and just wreck me. Like kind of what you mice did earlier. Cause if I if I spread up everywhere, there could be like corn dogs and furies just looking for freebies, you know? Maybe like a, a wild nurgling or two, like something like that could be totally fine, but yeah, we'll just do this and this. It's so much more money, you know? It's so much more money. Okay, looks fine. And then we could do a little little something something here. Three, and then you guys need to assist in the main siege. We don't have too many infantry. A couple of random units here and there. But uh, I think there's only one tower up here, so. Nurgle definitely loves its blob fights. All right, I am ready, Rhineless. You go ahead and deploy. All done. All done. Okay. Okay, let's see. Hey, Lich109, I got your message, man. Sounds good. All right, so Rhineless, you set up your army and then you can ready up and that's that's how we'll know. That's how, how we'll know to go. Yeah, so we got a big air force this time. I don't, I don't wanna get wrecked in the skies. Purple Sun might be good against like Halberd Blobs. Honestly, though, Nurgle magic is probably just better. Just wanted to try something different here. No Forsaken. No, I'm because I, I invested in big chunky boys. Look at him, dude. Oh, so cool. This guy's got a lot of HP, and they do have some. I guess I have some Nurgle magic. I, I just don't have the healing. I wish they had fleshy abundance. That would actually make them pretty good. My my pitch for the great monsters of demons is to make them um, make their spells bound, so they don't. It's kind of dumb how you have to like pay wins for their spells, and you already have like another caster. I guess if Nurgle had like a combat lord that wasn't um, wasn't a caster, it would make more sense to bring like one of these guys. Yeah, we got a big we got a big goon squad, man. We got a big goon squad. Yeah, Forsaken definitely seemed good. I'm trying something different here though. Rhineless setting up the uh, corn army's actually not. Eh, it's about normal. That's what we've seen in most of the games today. 
Is that guys? Cool. Very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for the uh, Chaos Space Marine Codex as well. An old 40K. I wish somebody in chat had some inside info and could tell me when Old World comes out. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Yeah, Zinch, Zinch seems like really strong in this game mode. Like amazing Air Force, like lots of good tools across the board. Yeah, Plague Bearers will be fun. I don't know. They're slow and steady. They're just going to kind of slowly march for the main objective. Forsaken die really quick, though. I feel like corn, like corn spawn and halberds, you're just going to like dunk on them like mega fast. So we'll see what the defenders look like right now. All right, cool. So let's head up here. Let's head up here. You guys can head up um, this direction. And now we get the Air Force and just fly over and look for any freebies we can. In the meantime, oh, that's right. Nurglings can't climb freaking walls. Wait, what the hell is this? He literally had Furies right next to those guys. Oh, it's, I guess they're open field. All right, so what's on the walls? Uh, is it basic corn warriors? It is. Okay, that's actually cool. So we can bring you guys here. Little Chaos Furies can move over the top as well. And uh, do we want to go fight here? Probably so. Yeah, we can actually fight. So it looks like they came out to play, which I'm totally down for. The, the Flymen can attack these guys up in the walls. We can get some Furies helping there too. And let's pull you guys around. Looks like we are going to have a Royal Rumble out here, so we need to kill that Chaos Cultist for sure. And drop a uh, Plague Bear Summon here, most likely. Yeah, that'd be nice. Cool. So, Big Chungus will fight them at the gates. Looks like they have kind of moved out here to fight as well. I think it's going pretty well in the gate. Um, we do have our Herald, who needs to go help in the walls. Uh, do we want to do Purple Sun? Purple Sun, won't you come and wipe away the Chaos? Let's see how that goes. Drop some heals. Oh, it canceled it. That's actually kind of convenient, because he started to dodge it anyway, so... Alright, Spirit Leech will do. So, Furies, you guys attack down. You guys attack down. And just try and value trade. I mean, this is actually good for us. Corn Dogs, I think I we got wiped out on the other side, unfortunately, but, you know, it is what it is. You can't win all these engagements. Uh, let's get you working on the Gatehouse here. Furies around the back. Let's see. We'll attack the Chaos Furies. Yeah, the little Fly Goon Squad did really good work. The hal it's because the Halberds weren't on the walls. So the towers are still owned by corn because we have no infantry up there, but it is what it is. Yeah, just keep fighting here. All right, so how are we looking down here? Great, so we broke that position. Let's go waddle to the gatehouse. Uh, oh, there's actually still some corn warriors fighting here. Okay, we can finish them off. How are we looking here? All righty. So the wall gooning proving to be very strong. Oh, I can't click these guys. Can't click them. They're like bugging out. Man, that sucks. All right, Furies. Yep, let's take out these corn dogs if we can. It looks like they're being used as like a distraction of sorts. But like you can also just go for like army losses, right? So I could just try an army loss this. And you move here. I cannot click on them? Okay, now I can. We do have Rot Glorious Rot also. And we have a cultist here who has not used the summons yet, so let's use them just to speed this along. Great unclean one. Go after the cultists. We're living our best life. This is a this is a good fast and furious fight here, for sure. Hey, Nurglings are working on the gate over there, finally. Finally! Alright, so... Take you down. It's a party town. These guys just keep getting sandwiched here. Just trying to delay us, basically. Um, these Nurglings are just waddling. It's so weird how Nurglings can't work on the walls. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, like, literally the whole Corn army is here, so, like, I, I feel like I'm just fighting a standard battle, almost. Where I'm just trying to army lost. Army lost them, right? Which is the play. All right, so let's let's just pile in into this wall position and just use Rot Glorious Rot on them when they're all like blobbed up like this. Uh, this fight has been decisively won, so let's move back here. And this fight looks like it's going well too. I mean, the double cultist is here, but we do have the great unclean one, so let's see what we can do. All right, so we've landed here. Now it's time for a little bit of purple sun action, maybe. Although probably just spirit leech and halberds is, is a good call, also. Uh... Okay, you know what? Maybe this was a mistake landing here. Let's just run and go this way. That purple sun was sweet! Come on! Okay, we're going to lose some Furies, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, the Rot Flies got away, which is all that really matters. Alright, boys. Keep beating on the gatehouse. We have the secret agent Nurglings. Everyone's working over now. And have the Nurglings gotten through here yet? Not quite. Okay. 
Okay, so this army's like running for the hills. Let's let's just like slow them down and harry their position. Uh, we'll have more heals here soon too. How long till we get through the gatehouse? It's gonna take a hot minute for sure. Yes, good, my precious, good. Yeah, we'll just save up a little bit more magic. Screw it. Uh, we got some what chaos warriors here. We can go chase with furies. All right, so that guy's getting chased off the battlefield. And those Nurglings will get through the gatehouse eventually and get some capture points. Uh, Purple Sun is how much wins of magic? 18, so I can actually do it again. Okay, that's great. And I believe these Nurglings have gotten through. No, they haven't. It's like one of those weird situations where the gate's open, but it's not. It's very buggy. That happens sometimes. So we're, we're going to get the Furies in there. I'm just going to try and army loss them. And cool. So the double great unclean one actually worked out pretty well. The halberds are here. Those are the ones we got to watch out for. These are all basic warriors, so we don't need to worry about them. So we can just attack those. And Nurglings. Some of the Nurglings did get through the gatehouse. Have you brave Nurglings managed to break through that gate yet? Aha, you have. So let's go capture this. Oh, he's building a tower there too. Perfect. Pox Riders cackling all the way to the bank. Let's get in there and drop a heal. And heals up. Boom. Fury's lurking overhead. Korn's army is very, very bare bones, and we've gotten through the gatehouse here. So now we need to just like march to the back of the city, basically. Yeah, we still have our plague bearers. They're, they're going strong. Do we get in here yet? Is it open? It is. Okay. So it's open for all to enjoy. I'm going to go get that, that victory point for us here. Mm, might as well spear leech. Come on, big man. Gonna have to try and kill some of these towers too. Corn army is very, very tattered. Very, very tattered. But we need to just like we have 13 minutes to get to the back objective, so I think that's enough time. Yeah, that tower is doing work though, man. It's doing some serious work. All right, drift across. Uh, barricade is blocking us. Great unclean one should be able to take that out pretty quickly. Little nerglings that could are trying their hearts out. And great. These Chaos Warriors are broken, so now we can get our Goon Squad in. Let's actually go Goon as Lord. I think if we just kill his Lord, I think he just gets army lost. Alright, so keep moving. Keep moving, team. Let's go. Keep waddling. The Nurgle, the Nurgle Gravy Train. Alright, so how much wins do we have? We have 28 wins in total. And how much is Spirit Leech? Spirit Leech is 8. 24, 3. Okay, so we have a handful of them left. That little Herald's... Is he on the Bulldog? Oh, he is on the Bulldog, so he's going to be slightly harder to catch. Granted, we do have Curse of the Fly or whatever it's called, so... Lord of the Flies. You can have Furies just chase down these Warriors. I think that's a better use of their time. Alright, guys. Uh, you can go there. The big squad can head to the back of the city. Nurgle has those slowing abilities, too, which are also quite good. I think we can attack the Towers with these guys? Yeah, we can. See? Just have the Furies kill it. The Bulldog's running for the hills. You know what? Screw this. Why am I chasing that guy? I can just, like, literally wipe these guys out in a couple seconds. Because with the Spirit Leech plus the Furies taking the Halberd attacks, I think that's enough. So, let's get you guys waddling this way. Hmm. Let's see here. Let's keep going, team. Keep going. Okay, they're not dying as quick as I thought they would. Oh god, the corn warriors are so strong. Let's get on them. Nurglings are capturing that. Honestly, though, I feel like it's pointless. Yeah, I think I had eight minutes left when he when I died, so... If we were, like, doing it like it was an actual, like, tournament match or whatever, like, that's, that's how we would do that. So this halberd unit should get crumped pretty quick. Yeah, we can actually use the Great Unclean One's magic, too. Yeah, it did some good work. I'm happy with that. All right, let's just like kind of work our way to army losses here. Come on, big man, you can make it. I believe in you guys. Plague bearers can waddle this way. Oh no, there's something at the gate still. I guess you'll never make it there. So let's just have you go back here. All right, team, let's grind them down. We have fecundity. Let's pop that for some heals. Spirit leech the halberds. Go, Nurgle! You can do it! Put your back into it! Going for that back objective, baby. Just in case. Okay, Chaos Warriors with Halberds getting worn down here. Armor is being sundered, which is always awesome. And do we have any more magic? Not at this moment. 
The great unclean ones doing doing some work. Yeah, so we army lost him there. Uh, rapid cycle charging towers makes him go down way quicker. Very cool. So yeah, if this were if this had been one of the tournament style games, I think I would have won because I lasted longer on the defense. So you know, that's that's the jam. But I mean, he did rush out and did a very aggressive strategy, which I think would have potentially been the factor that went my way. So I think everything's broken, just demons crumbling, really. One thing about those rules you might use is we would have to work it out. Maybe it has to say like army losses, because if somebody just had gorgers or spawn running in circles, they could draw the timer out and last longer. See what I'm saying? So maybe if somebody hits army losses, they they that it still counts. Because what if you're playing ogres and they have like four gorgers running around? Yeah, something to consider. Yeah. Also, the crumbling time is kind of an interesting factor too. Like, what if that decided uh, decided the game? GG. <clears throat> Yeah, that was an aggressive play, coming out of the city to fight Nurgle, for sure. I actually like the double grade on Clean, and I feel like it wasn't bad. Felt like it wasn't bad at all. All right, guys. So, I got some stuff I got to take care of today. Um, I'm going to rest my hand, too, because I, I, I had a really bad day last week where it was hurting really bad, so I'm, I'm trying to take it easy. So, I'll be back um, tomorrow with the stream. Tomorrow's probably going to be Age of Empires or Dawn of War or something. And then... Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna wait for the patch whenever that is to stream another Total War tournament. So, because you know, we need, we need some balance. I'm tired of, I'm tired of seeing Zinchin ogres in every game. I've had two units of Chaos Furies take down tons of towers. Okay, got it. Good to know, man. All, all the campaign tricks that you guys know that I don't are coming into play. But if you guys did enjoy the format, do drop a like. I think it has a ton of potential. Big shout out to you, Mice, B Master, and Chat for uh, putting all this together. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we'll be back soon. Don't worry, guys. A lot of streams coming on the horizon. Lots of fun times, but that is it for today. Right, but the cap can counteract people holding out. That's true. Yeah, but I could see army losses being an end. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right, take care, my friends. See you next time. Thank you for your support. We got some new members, some donations. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, drop a like if you enjoyed the stream. We'll see you next time.